Good afternoon, everybody. Today we're going to be starting at. Oh, got a little bit of feedback. One second. Let me just fix this real quick, guys. I'm so sorry about that. Do, 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 do. How do I fix this? Oh, I know how. Easy. Boom, right there. <laughs> sorry, I had my Twitch stream open at the same time, and it was just too much. Too much for me. Um, you might hear a little bit of music in the background. I do have roommates, and uh, and so there is going to be a goodish chance that we are going to end up with a little bit of a little bit of some stuff happening. You know what I mean? And you know, I'm going to spectate. And um, you know, yeah, you, 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 there's going to be some there's going to be some background noise. It's just the way it is. I got roommates, but anyways, we've already found a game. Um, hopefully, they don't mind that I cast them. Hope you don't mind that I cast you. <laughs> but it's going to be fun. We're going to have some good time. We're going to have some good times. And, uh... We'll see. We'll see what's going on. We do have a, this. Does look like a lobby full of a bunch of new names, except for we do have Happy Coder in this lobby. We do ha have Happy Coder in this lobby. We all know that he's got a very, 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 very good um, um, eco. Um, he has a very good eco um, build down. Um, he does struggle from time to time. With, no, sad face. <laughs> Have <laughs> minded if you wouldn't have said anything. I gotta say something. Uh, I can leave. I can leave. Rage quitting. <laughs> I have casted a few rage quitters. No lie about that. 
I have casted a couple of rage quitters. I think we have one really good example of that where he rage quit and then his team won. He learned to carry out some good builds. Yes, about 26 requires skill. It's true. It's true. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, you know, some of you guys have a point. Um, listen, stream sniping is one thing. Like I told um, like like we talked to like talked about two episodes ago. Um, anything you see on my stream is something that you should have been scouting for in the first place. Um, and if you're paying attention to my stream, you're probably putting yourself at a serious disadvantage. <laughs> I'm not the best in the world. Um, so anybody that's new watching this, uh, just understand that I am not the best world. I will never ever claim to be the best world. But in order to be a streamer, I do have to commentate on the things that I see, the things that I feel should be done, could be done, so on and so forth. Um, we have cast a thought dog in the past. Uh, who else? Uh, Happy Coder. We definitely all know Happy Coder is. He has a pretty good build off the bat. Um, he has in the past shown that he can dominate with his build once he hits that tier three push, but get some pressure. He can can tilt just a hair. I, I do expect him to to have worked on that since then. Um, anybody else that we uh, cast before? I don't see any other names that look familiar. I, I kind of purposely avoided. I kind of purposely avoided. Uh, well, we might have a no show. It's possible we we have a no show, but um, I purposely avoided just because you know it's kind of nice to get a get some fresh names in here, and I'm pretty sure the guys will join. Um, um, the guys will see me on and they will join whatever lobby that, well, uh, uh, we got them. Nice. You get a little bit, stop giving your push. Yeah. 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 Okay. So for our front lines at the Canyon entrance, we got Chunk McGurthington. Chunk McGurthington. I kind of like that name. It doesn't roll off the tongue, but it's, it's, it's kind of slick. Pine Mountain going to be his right hand man. Going to be holding the Canyon entrance, just at the right of the Canyon entrance. That is thought dog. We all know thought dog. He's, he's. He's experienced. He knows what he's doing. Um, he, he's the kind of guy that doesn't stick out, but he does a job. So I think we all work with somebody like that. I mean, like, we can all appreciate somebody like that. <laughs> Aggressive's laughing. Hey, Aggressive, welcome to the chat, bro. Hey, Zin D uh, Dariana, pleasure to, pleasure to meet you. Pleasure to see you. I hope you enjoy the stream. She says hi. 42. Good old 42. Um, I have played with and against him once or twice. He's he's a good guy. He's a good guy. He definitely knows what he's doing. Hoda, um, he's going to be completely new to the stream, going to be supporting 42, and pretty much, in my opinion, this whole side of the line to some degree, to some degree. Um, hopefully, he doesn't have to, and he can kind of eco up. Anur is going to be our air player. Happy Coder, we all know he's going to be. He's going to be Echo. It's just kind of his bread and butter. Our support for the left-hand side of the line is going to be Cryocore. Now, let's go see the right, the red team. <laughs> I'm not going to say what Red just said. We're, we're good, <laughs> but um, I don't want to. I don't want to just you know, just do what you got to do, Red. <laughs> but anyways, for the front line, uh, the front line offense of Red, we have Jack Cowles. Jack Hall, I'm gonna just call him Jackal. Jackal is gonna be manning the front of his um, of his canyon of Clan Bad. We have Bot. Bot going with a pretty standard for uh, <clears throat> well, unless it's more standard to take all three mexes first, but he but he does what I do. He takes two mexes and then he goes with like a little more energy, and then he might go with two more energy. I'm thinking right after his bot lab. I'm not sure. Um, Nelson going with the. Going with the bot lab for the Cortex Commander. Um, he's going to be just left of the canyon. And defending the canyon is going to be Augustine Stigia. I don't know. I don't know. I tried. His support is going to be uh, Servalat. He's going to be supporting the right-hand side of the line. Our air player is going to be Snot Gun. Get old Snot Gun. He's going more into a uh, solar-based economy. This is pretty standard for most air players. It is a little bit more solar than I would expect because they do eventually transition into into uh, wind, from what I from my understanding. Um, probably four, in my opinion, is good. Chunk McGurthington. Wait, I know, right? Chunk McGurthington. It is one hell of a name. We do have some spectators going to be spectating the game. Why are you not streaming on YouTube? I should be. Actually, I am streaming on YouTube, believe it or not. I just don't, I don't get any traction on YouTube, and it's easier with StreamYard just to – just uh, 
do everything via that. Plus, you know, control uh, copy pasting just one link to throw in for everybody is going to be uh, it's just easy. So my Twitch is kind of where I'm kind of focusing, but it is streaming on YouTube, believe it or not. I uh, I can put my YouTube into the chat eventually when when this game is over, if nobody minds. Um, user already taken is going eco. Looks like he's going pretty hardcore into the wind. He has opted for the bot lab, which is wise. You know, it's pretty standard to uh, opt in the bot lab because it is cheaper and it's a good way to get a few extra cons out. Lone Wolf. I have played with Lone Wolf. No, maybe I casted him. I don't know if I played with him or just cast him. Looks like he is going with a bit of a uh, bit of support. I would say it's a good call what he is doing. I'm not going to say exactly because we do have some people listening to the stream right now. I don't know if they're in game. I'm not going to try to give away too much. Um, he's already going into more advanced economy. I like it. Let's see what all the pinions all about. That's, I think he came from over here somewhere. Something. No, some, no, no. It's from the blue side. Blue side doing some pinging. Looks like there was a little bit of a run by. Uh, yeah, yeah, there's a little bit of a run by. Not too much damage done yet. Maybe a mech's taken out here and there. Yeah, just just a few ticks. Uh, they're going to try and get their value out of them. Um, that many ticks doesn't seem like that big of an investment, but you do have to get some sort of damage out of them with that many ticks to begin with. Or at least some scouting, which he was able to do. Happy Coder was uh, put on the back foot for a split second, but looks like he's back into it. Doing his standard a bajillion windmills and a billion converter build with a uh, he does have some storage built up. Um, Happy Coder I think is floating a little bit, not typical of Happy Coder, but it's not too bad. It's barely floating. We do have some more. Sounds like gunshots going off somewhere. Up oh, where was it? We do have, do have early air right here. We do have a. A blitz tank trying to get through. Not going to be able to get past that many pawns. All right. So far, things should start stabling out a little bit more, especially as our front lines get more established. There's going to be less and less opportunity for these little run bys. Yellow making a run by right now with a little blast blitz tank. Going to try. He will get this uh, mex. He's going. He's going to be disappointed to find that there aren't mexes taken. But mex is not taken and worse than mex is lost. Honestly, to be perfectly honest. He will he will be able to get this second mix. This will ensure that he provide he pays for that investment right there. Running head first into a laser tower, but he should be able to get it out. A mace will be meeting that blitz. This should be the end of the blitz, unless the mace has just got like you know stormtrooper accuracy. Blue player does wisely get out a one or two um, reclaimed bots, uh, Lazaruses. Yeah, um, yeah, I absolutely do stream on. On YouTube as well. I stream on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch. I'm thinking about getting TikTok. I'm an old man. I'm an old man. I stick with what I know. I'm like, ah, oh, Twitch and Facebook and YouTube. Uh, TikTok, I don't know too much about TikTok. Yeah, I, I'm, a, I'm a bit older than probably a lot of you. All right, looks like Augusta, uh, we're going to call him Augustus Galoop because I'm thinking, oh my God, that's a lot of turrets. This many turrets right now with no threat of Rocketeers or any artillery right now is a bit of waste in my opinion. Um, it's quite the investment, but he will be able to lock this down for quite a while, and he was able to lock down his 3.2 um, mechs. As we all know, my one of my biggest things is uh, that you absolutely have to at least grab your mechs. Looks like the mechs for, uh, for Nelson is grabbed, and he has successfully contested a uh, 3.2 mechs, giving him a bit of an advantage on Pine Mountain. Red team doing a really good job taking and contesting mexes. Thought dog trying his best to uh to at least negate the the light laser tower that contests his mechs. I would like to see him the second he's done with this wall hit that mex up. I do not see a radar coming out of Thought Dog. This is this can be a mistake. I don't think it's too big of a mistake, but radar is super important, especially early game. We do have some Rocketeers out for our pink player who is um, our backline support. I do like that he's supporting, but I think Orange has got it under control. I think it's time for him to go more into his eco, in my personal opinion, because the way that the lines are looking and from what his radar should be telling him is that there's not a lot on this side going on other than artillery, and it's not even that much artillery. 
I would say cool it down just a little bit and then get into your get into uh, your economy a bit harder. Could probably get with the way he's got his slider set up, he could absolutely get two more um, energy converters and it would make his life a little bit easier, make these uh, advanced solar collectors go up a bit faster and maybe he might be able to pump out units at the same time. I think it is a mistake pumping out units while trying to get your economy going at the same time at this moment. Could be wrong. We all know I've been wrong in the past. I, I think last game we had a moment where I made an observation and it was in fact wrong. I like the fact that he does notice when his troops get fired upon and he does micro room out of artillery fire. That is a good job by him. Um, it requires quite a bit of APM and he's doing quite good. Of course, we are going to see artillery in the canyon because the splash damage and the the problem with like being able to move around in the canyon can make that artillery could amplify its effectiveness. Looks like Augustus Galoop, um, his commander is down to a third. This is going to um, hinder his ability to really kind of repair or help out his front line with his commander's build power or and his ability to heal. And um, it, it, it will prove to be a bit of a challenge to hold this simply just because of that. Let's see if someone's going tier three already. I don't know. I don't know if someone's going tier three, aggressive pointed out. I'm sorry. I'm trying to pay attention to everything at the same time. There's definitely no no tier three right now for, for our eco player on the red team. Ooh, it's getting close for Cappy Coder already. And we're only, we're about nine minutes into the game. Yeah, he sold his T2. Happy Coder sold his T2. Yeah, it, it is pretty, I would assume so, but I don't expect perfect builds on this map. I mean, in, well, this is kind of a newer player map. I don't expect perfect builds in my games because I do try not to cast the higher level guys because higher level guys you cast enough. You know what I mean? You know, so I expect more of a 14 minute tier three and then maybe a 15 to 17 minute, um, 14 to 17 minute um, tier three uh, Marauder push, in my opinion. That's what I, that's what I see. I see is most consistent, but we all do know, like, I'm sure you have a few nightmares about, about a uh, happy coder at Agressa. <laughs> we do know Agressa is perfectly capable, but yeah, no, um, he, he does not seem to, it says eight minutes. No, oh, oh, yeah. It seems like a long time for his, um, for his, uh, first APHIS though. No, go for it, dude. Do your eco. How are you gonna get better at it? Like, like you're not bad at it. Just you're going against Happy Coder. And look at him. You know, he's he's pretty nuts. So we do look like we do have a push coming through the left hand side canyon for red team. Uh, we do have what looks like a break of Rocketeers and Maces pushing through, getting stopped by Shurikens. Eh, yeah, he is a bit faster, but he. I think uh, I think he's just done it so long. You know, it just happens. Um, he is going to be able to deny this tier. This, oh, I'm hoping, well, he should be, no, those sure can stop it. Oh, good save. Yeah. All right. What a fist are you talking about? This one over here has definitely got some time going. The only a pieces I see are for red and green at the moment. Yeah. 120. Yeah. It's definitely going up. Well, it's definitely going up. Well, Looks like I got me a little co-host today. I love it. Helping me point out stuff, looking around, having a good time. But these shurikens are definitely improving their value. I do love to see shurikens on the um, – being able to defend, help defend the canyons. Shurikens, EMP bombers are great in this map. But looks like Tier 1 – ooh. Tier 1 uh, vehicle lab for our uh, – for 42 is going down. His commander is taking quite a lot of damage. I don't think he'll be able to get it because uh, maybe no, no, unless he misses his fuck unless unless you miss your D guns, unless you miss some D guns, and it took out a few of those shurikens. Oh, thought dog, <laughs> poor wait, 
poor thought thought dog. Yeah, he saw the whole thing too. He saw he saw what I saw. E gun failure. I can't talk. I've done it. I've done it. I've done it on stream. I do like the inclusion of maybe one less of these, but there's no there's no kill like overkill. There's no kill like overkill. So, and there's no watch like Overwatch. <laughs> so, no, I've had that delayed to gun, but um, <coughs> so Overwatch should be able to uh, the walls helping out greatly because he's just hitting walls at the moment. And I don't know, does he have vision? I don't see any um, sneaky peats or anything. Yeah, the Overwatch is a. Uh... Oh, I gotta see his vision. This is our uh, brown player. Player view. Yeah, it's just the bad radar. Bad radar. We do have a little bit of put of a uh, grunt push coming out from our uh, tan player. He is going to try and look and do some eco damage. I do like the aggressiveness. Um, he isn't going to be leaving too much, but the AOE from the stouts are just going to be just too much for it. While I'm not going to laugh my ass off, what the fuck? Yeah, it was kind of a waste, but... Oh, another push coming from the Brown player. Looks like they're going to be pushing in and being able to take a big bite out of our yellow player, tan player. Oh, no, gold player. Sorry, sometimes you just don't know. It looks yellow, it looks tan, it looks gold, who knows. But, yeah, they're going to be able to – no, Shurikens once again, saving the day. You did get the Mexes. Ouchie, Babas. More and more. Ooh, this has been super aggressive lately. Looks like shurikens. Yeah. Looks like uh, there is a call to uh, take out these shurikens. Um, I would not be surprised. There's just not enough air. You can't do it. It's just not enough air. Like, it will get taken out. And who knows? I don't think. I'm not counting, like, anti-air turrets or anything. But it would be nice to be able to take out the shurikens. It's not good, in my opinion. Should have an air force that would be capable of it. But this is just my opinion. Orange, my homies, my homie been been smoking. <laughs> Go, that's your homie, huh? Let's. Who is your homie again? It's gonna be Nelson. I have played with him against Nelson, and I'm pretty sure I cast him before too. <laughs> he's been smoking. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's doing all right. Backline, yes. Thought dog, I kind of agree with him. His backline is pretty good right now, but once again, yeah, make tanks. But the problem is. He can't make anything. And even so, like, his economy's been ravaged so long. But the problem is, these, these are Rocketeers. This is not meant for assault. Why are they back here? Like, <laughs> like to be perfectly honest, like, I don't know. Like, I think, I think honestly, pink is foregone on um, any Tier 2 whatsoever just to try and win this, which... May have been the right decision, especially knowing how good their back line is. May have been the right decision if they could get anywhere over here. They can't put blue team on their back foot. Only issue I'm having here is uh, they they can, if, if no real significant damage is done, yeah, I, I would agree. I think now it's time to focus eco. Orange is 100% correct. Orange is 100% correct. So... <laughs> what is Honda doing? Honda? What? Oh, Hoda. Hoda. Well, I'm a. Oh my God, that's a. Yeah, yeah. Let's see. Yeah, his eco is. He's stalling out pretty hardcore. Um, it's a million. It's a million. Um, it's a million windmills with with four. Uh, with. Well, no, he's got advanced energy converters, so it makes sense. You know, he doesn't have regular energy converters, but I don't know. It's like you can't, you can't have this. You can't. You're definitely not going to be building off that. What? He should be able to build this faster, in my opinion. But oh, here's the problem. All these are focusing here, so these right here require a ton. Yeah, get these done first, and then hit that. Otherwise, you're going to be spending forever building just building three of these and like. Then this won't get done. So, yeah, just focus this real quick. Then you have the build power, and it will make this faster. That's what I would do. 
Because that just takes, like, these things are surprisingly expensive energy. 3,200 energy. We do have a tier, what well, looks like a tier three push coming out from our red player. Um, about the same time, tier three is coming out for our green player, Happy Coder. Red player is surprising me with a decent 17 minute, yep, like I said, 17 minute tier three push coming right out. Looks like they're going to be meeting the middle. Um, this could be a bit harsh for uh, our red player because there are Mausers and light laser turrets. Plus, he is going to be meeting Green's tier three right there, giving him probably giving him a slider, a little bit of advantage, even though he does not have the numbers that red player has. Yes, there is eco right here. He could probably take out some of the eco for our light blue player. I'm going to throw for his whole team by building. Did he built air. Where is Hondo? Where is Hondo? It looks like he's not in the game anymore. Yeah, it's possible. It's hard to catch everything for sure. But our blue team looks like, yeah. Ouchie, Babas. Uh, yep. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> what was he thinking? Yeah. Yeah. What was he thinking? Ouchie. Oh man. Well, air player is pretty much gone for our uh, um, for our blue team. This is quite a devastating blow. Um, this can be held off of tier three, I believe. Um, the hard thing about this is like how much damage are you gonna allow it to do? Thought dog is probably gonna attempt to stop. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. This is blue stuff, right? What's he doing? Hold on. That's not blue. This is thought. Uh, all, right, all right, all right, all right, all right. My bad, thought dog. My bad. I get all Twitter played I see stuff rolling around in the back lines, getting button firing stuff on, and then I get all confused. Yeah, four chevrons, 500 hours. Vote did fail. I'm not sure why, but <coughs> everybody has the reasons. I think this was quite a problem. Obviously, this canyon had some issues. Um, Lone Wolf, definitely the 2v1 on the front line, helped out a lot. This player ecoed, and I think uh, the player that was here kind of got put in a bad spot getting 2v1. But I always preach that um, people be more aware of things like that and, and deciding and trying to be more flexible can help your game out. And I think if this player may have been more flexible, yep, no worries. No worries. <laughs> yeah, it's hard, to, it's hard to pay attention to the chat and see what's going on, especially since there's people in chat that are talking to their teammates and all that. But it looks like green, right as I'm saying that, freaking green – uh, Happy Coder with his Tier 3 uh, Marauder push, which he's so well known for, is starting to uh, – wow, he's got a bajillion and a half Marauders. Hold on. Right now on the field there are 37 Marauders. The vast majority of them are Happy Coders. This right here, this is why you never, ever rage quit because – we all know Happy Coder is good, and he has the ability he, to uh, have the eco to pump this stuff out. Red may not have Red may have been able to meet him with uh, an original push, but I don't think he is economy. Yeah. Oh shit! Indeed. <laughs> yeah. The fact of the matter is, like, there's no there's no advanced energy converters for this guy. He's just gonna flip. I don't know. He, he he doesn't have the build power to to really spend his money, or if he does, he's spending it unwisely. Because, yeah, what the fuck is this game? Yeah, correct. Great game for the first game of the stream. Am I wrong, guys? Am I wrong? Like, there's so much going on. It's hard for me to keep up. Our red player. It looks. Oh, that explosion did take out a nice chunk. Lone wolf trying to be a lone wolf. Yep. Oh, can he do it? Oh, no, no. Good micro by Happy Coder. Yeah, get the build power. Get the build power. I would agree with this 100%. 
Yep, there you go. Basically neutering their eco player. Neutered. You know how I always talk about those big, those big levels. Well, you need to have the big levels that Happy Coder had to take away the levels of your opponent. Once again, just Happy Coder rolling through the map, just picking, picking and choosing who dies today. Um, <laughs> once he hits that seven, okay. So if you're playing against Happy Coder, you got to be aware of 17 minutes. You got to be aware of 17 minutes. This kid becomes pretty unstoppable at 17 minutes. So at 17 minutes, it like we all know Agressa, we all know um, Fanat, we all know a bunch of our buddies, you know. But 17 minutes, um, oh, they're trying their best to take out Happy Coder. I don't know what he's doing right now, but but he's like now he's like oh fuck, no no, no yeah, uh, thought dogs on top of it. Thought Dog took it out. Well played. Well played, guys. Great stream. Great game to stream. All right. Well played, gents. Great. T-R-E-A-T. First aim to stream. Uh, okay. Honestly, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody that's anybody that's been in my stream, we we've seen them. Like it's the truth. Yeah. Well, it's the truth. Um Happy Coder is really, really is a very, very, very good eco player. And he has the potential to be even better. Um, once 17 minutes hits, you have to, to be able to defend against like his crazy um his crazy pushes. He hits it religiously. He hits that push religiously. We had two names. No, it is what it is. Uh, so maybe that's where he has where where he has his set of balls. What do you do if the wind shit? Well, you got, you know, maybe he starts out. Maybe he starts. I think I have seen him start out with a few solars. It really depends. Um, I've seen eco players say that you don't play Russian roulette with uh, the wind. So you, uh, so no matter what, they'll start like two, three um, solars. But then you'll see other ecos, and they'll start out with whatever, whatever this prompts them to do. Then you'll. You will see other people, um, no matter what, go in. Just like they'll be producing their first like con and five minutes because of wind being so shit, you know. <laughs> oh yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, at least as nicely, right, 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 right. Can you FPS cap? Hmm, can you? I don't know. I don't even really know if I know what that means. All right, do Dan's in the game. Ooh, I love it. Do Dan being in the game? Uh, I'm kidding. Sorry. LOL. Uh, Aggressa's in. Ooh, this is gonna be a good game. Looks like Aggressa. Oh, he's he's in front of Happy Coder. This is gonna be a fun one. They were they were pretty much they were they were going at each other for a minute, a few games. Aggressa got. I think Happy Coder got the best of them for one game, and then Aggressa kind of. Did what he does best, and he found uh, he found like a little loophole. Um, he'd make a good lawyer, I think. You know, finding loopholes and stuff. But um, but he uh, he found a loophole and came around the third game, and and he pulled it off. Uh, we all know, dude. Dan, dude. Dan is a he is a tactician. He can he can carry if he needs to, but he just wants to do his job. Make sure everybody does their job. Yeah, he would make a good coach. A good coach and a good teammate. It's not gun. We saw it's not gun. It's not gun. Definitely has his, you know, he definitely is. He's definitely got his shit together. Straight up. Zero one hex. Don't really know who zero one hex is, but he is going to be supporting Nelson. Uh, uh Neslin. 
Uh, Nestling, we didn't get too much on him. From what I can tell, he is aggressive's little uh, buddy. So, you know, if Gress vouches for him, I I will think that he's great. Crunk McGurthington going to be going for the Canyon front. His right-hand man is going to be yellow, Market Maker. Never casted Market Maker before. I do enjoy a uh, some new people. We do have some requests for things and stuff going on. For three things and stuff for the red team. <laughs> I wonder I wonder why that many of that, but whatever. Bad bot going for a three mech start for going just left of the canyon. It's not a bad start. I like it. Even though the wind is 15.3, he is going for solar. Um, a little bit of a mistake in my opinion, especially if the wind decides to be a little bit more stable right here. You can take advantage of it because that will uh, you will be able to fill that up much more quickly and make more you uh, because you will eventually be eat it all up. So the more you have, the better at the beginning of the game. So yellow or uh, thought dog, do what he can. Um, win at 16, only supporting everything only with two uh, two windmills right now, which you can do at 16 wind. Wally Marts, <laughs> I love the name. Wally Marts got two wind, two solar. Uh, more of a balanced build. Going with the bot lab, um, probably because he is plant probably planning to be more eco than support. For Thought Dog, um, if he knows Thought Dog, I would say this is wise because Thought Dog is definitely capable of holding Canyon. But if he doesn't know, if this is just something he always does, um, it's a bit risky. Very risky. Anor doing things and stuff. Doing, you know, maybe going on a little bit of a vacation. You know, um, he does have uh, he does have four windmills, which you know it's it's definitely a good call at the moment. He does have all three of his mexes. He's doing just fine as our air player. Zathrid going to be the counter. I'm um, going to be the eco going against um, good old Happy Coder, opting to get two um, storages off the bat. You know what? I kind of like it because this wind's been high all game. And right now, yes, I, I like it too, too right now looking at the situation. But watch, second the second one comes up, it's going to drop down to like three. All right, it looks like we do have a few ticks on the field. Doing a little bit of scouting right now, a little bit of a – now ticks are only – scouting is only as good as, as long as you see it. So if you don't see it, it could be an issue. But it does look like there is going to be a response – Maybe an accidental response. Oh, yeah, it was definitely an accident. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely ping that out. <laughs> Good job. Chunk McGurthington heading out to the front. We do have some forces in the canyon. It is about, it looks like he does have a little bit of a head on Nelson and being able to reach the front. Market maker and his opponent, his lane opponent, Elias. Well, they're about the same. Elias is putting down his um, mexes with his uh, with his uh, commander, which you know could be okay as long as his opponent decides to do that. Do the same because the last thing you want to do is lose your three point two node because you decided to grab a one point eight. You know, bad bot marching forward. Aggressa marching forward. Uh, it's, a, it's neck on neck. A little bit of Miss Micro by our red player. But Aggressa does go with a turret. That's not where I would put a turret if I was Aggressa, mainly because I want to. This 3.2 is right here. And that turret right now, as nice as it is. To hold off any well, maybe he was right because there is aggression coming through the canyon, and oh yeah, go yeah yeah, it's going to be able to. Uh, all right, now this is uh this is this is probably uh, aggressive. Who hurt you, buddy? Who hurt you? Oh my god! Oh no no, I was just commander doing the commander stuff because like he foresaw that in his mind. He's like, yep yep yep, I've seen. I've seen this story too many times. I walked past this point. I decided to like 
go forward, and then somebody runs right through there and kills everything. <laughs> Who hurt you, buddy? Just because someone cut you doesn't mean you bleed all over me. But he is securing his 3.2. I like it. I like it. Um, you don't want to let him get – there is a possibility of him getting range if he decides to put a little bit more of a forward, uh, forward turret. But he is collecting from his 3.2. That's all I ask for, for my players, for my frontline players at the beginning of the game. To at least collect from try at least try to collect from your 3.2s. Rockets coming out. Yeah, there it goes. He got for the minute it was out. For a minute, 60 seconds, 3.2. For that's you know 180, maybe 200 metal. Yeah, it paid for itself, you know. And that was a quick response. We do have Rocketeers. Um, my response to Rocketeers is always less towers, more units. Mainly because tower, unless it's an Overwatch. An Overwatch for me, which I forget what the Cortex version of the Overwatch is, which you know I'm not going to find by looking at this uh, commander. Cortex version of the Overwatch is going to be probably Twin Guard. No, it's not Twin Guard. It's the Warden. It's the Warden. Oh, looks like we got some metal sharing going on, helping out one of our more stronger players. Market Maker's front line looks pretty intimidating right now. Lots of artillery already going for, uh, oh, I just said the name of the damn thing. I just said the name of the damn thing, the, war the Warden. It's not going to be built for a while, but... Yeah, but he does have plans. Dragon's Claws, Maws. Yeah, and Warden. He does have plans to hold this <coughs> in his mind, and I would, I would, I would say that he is correct. That he has, he has right now. He is winning lane. He is absolutely winning lane against Elias. Aggressa, right now, it's push. It's going to be push pull. Um, there is the a decent amount of bot units out for his opponent bet of Clan Bad. Man, gold really pushed out. Thought Dog being an absolute gangster. An Overwatch, too. Oh. With plenty of walls. This guy is on it. He secured not only his 3.2, but his but the blue team's 3.2. And he didn't just secure it gently he didn't spit on it we'll say um he made sure there's an overwatch out here just to make sure that oh yeah but he is taking a little bit of damage from this artillery he is smart enough to know just a little bit of micro can just ensure that his artillery stays alive a bit longer um i don't think that this artillery could push into this with an overwatch here uh, unless it doesn't have power Thought dog, where's your power, buddy? It should it should start shooting because wind is going up. Yeah, there it goes. They are taking out the light laser towers, but ooh. what I would like to see. Now, this is just something. This is just something that may be able to help. But there is a mountain here, and and I'm sure he had his commander here and helping build with it. He could have put a uh, could have put one of those like little uh, cameras down. Now, this is obviously I have a uh, I have advantage looking from from a more uh, more macro position. But, you know, maybe I do like it when I see players like listen, uh, maybe listening to the stream say, hey, it's possible I could probably pull that off. And his Overwatch would be a little bit more effective. Um, his Overwatch does look like it's starting to go down. He Oh, he noticed it way too late. It's all right. What he is, in my opinion, that's fine. What he has lost is pretty – should have belonged to the blue player anyways. Problem is he doesn't have really any units out. And from my earlier thoughts, who oh, the fact that he got tier two this quick, but he's going to need to be able to hold. He, he's going to need to be able to produce a few units before it can really have the effect that he wants to hold this canyon. Canyon to me is right now very vulnerable, but not for long. It's it would. It, the timing right now is now for blue, but I don't think they quite understand that, which is fine. 
And honestly, just because this hound is out tells me that they wouldn't win. Yeah, there's more of them. There's a few more back. Yeah, they they wouldn't be able to get any super eco done. That's all right. It's all right. You know, they were able to secure the 3.2. That's all I want. Good job, dude, Dan. Good job, dude, Dan. You know, dude, Dan impresses me every time. He always knows just how to handle a situation. Um, he got him, you know, he was a little bit on the back foot because he was at an eco disadvantage, but and now maybe he might be able to secure their own 3.2. Who knows? We'll find out here in the next episode of J Nova Stream Z. We do have a little bit of an engagement going on the front line between yellow and our purple player. Well, is that purple? What I consider purple? Yeah, yeah. Yellow and our purple player. Um, that warden proven to be super helpful, plus. He does have the units on the front line to uh, repel whatever is going on here. Um, I'm not in total agreement with uh, what Purple is trying to achieve here. Blue is pushing uh, Aggressa, getting aggressive um, with it. There is he does have the support of his um, of his uh, towers and um, his um, ooh Janice's a few shots. Oh, Janice's are freaking murder on bots. And this is a mostly bot army. A few of those land are great. And they're not, they're pretty speedy. We do have a flank coming from um coming from Nelson. I do like it. it he is walking his bots into a maw at the moment. It's a little bit rough, uh, but you know, he was he did recognize the danger and pull back in time. Uh Nelson, I'm pretty sure, is gonna be since he is a friend of Aggressa, too many missile trucks for Surrey. Yeah. Um uh who said that uh yeah maybe yeah there's just too many right here well yeah right now those the stouts and janices you know right now it should make quick work of this army and this uh static defense maybe even sniping a commander i would like to see that warden go down because that is quite the investment to take out Mm, I don't know. Those Janices aren't. Yeah, oh, they did it. Good job. Warden being taken out is going to make it so his um, Rocketeers and Janices are going to be able to approach the rest of his um, rest of his de defenses. He will be able to pick them off slowly. Yeah, yeah. All y'all can do is just slightly ret retreat, do a fighting retreat until something more substantial comes out. This is where Red probably should start pumping out a little bit of t2 to help out with the situation for yellow because this is a bit volatile i'm not saying that yellow can't win i'm just saying that this is a situation if i am red i'm making sure yellow will win chunk mcgirthington doing his best. oh my god he's got two overwatches this is a bit of investment but it can pay off um especially since nelson is not going to be able to push out and there is a uh gauntlet firing into oh we do have what looks like a nuclear missile already going for our blue player oh right as he started getting a uh anti now that was not nearly as devastating as a nuclear missile should have been <laughs> that was not nearly as devastating as a nuclear missile should have been because there is enough energy to kind of come back uh maxes are gone bots are gone but Honestly, if you don't lose everything, if you got if you got like energy, you can you can pull it off. Like, really, what did he really lose in the long run? And uh, let's see. Yeah, I think he's gonna be fine. Maybe put up a few uh, um, energy converters just to kind of help out. Gressa getting aggressive. We do have a tier two push coming out against Aggressa. Um, his commander, quite a bit of danger. Yep, dead. Taking out a few of his defensive. Um, yeah. Ooh, who's calling for help? Pine Mountain's calling for help. Uh, yeah. Well, no, Pine Mountain actually built a good chunk of his shit in front and avoiding the nuke. <laughs> good on him. 
Good on him. A little bit of an air skirmish going on between our pink and uh, lime green player. Looks like lime green is going to be able to take out most, if not all, of pink's air forces. But pink, being the being on his home field, is going to be able to reinforce as fast as he can. It's just not that fast. I think uh, snot gun has the advantage. Well, they have about the same, but still, it's weird. Yeah, res bots would be nice for sure. Another nuke going off. This one heading towards. Oh, no. Oh, anti nuke. But the anti nuke and nuke met right over Purple's base. And I did not know this. Apparently, I learned something today. Because the anti nuke blew up over the A base, it still did a massive amount of damage. Now, obviously, it didn't do as much damage because I think it blew up pretty much right over. It just took out windmills. And he does have energy storage. So the energy storage will be able to be kind of held back on for a little bit so he doesn't stall out while getting what he needs going. <coughs> so, yeah, that was, that, was quite, that was quite different. I've never seen anything like that before. We have Tier 1 uh, Tick Spam coming out for um, our red player. He is quite spaced out. Everything is super spaced out. He has a ton of windmills. The only thing I think he needs a lot more of is build power. And even this amount of build power for Aphises that he's building right here, I would prefer even more of that, to be perfectly honest. I think they missed an opportunity going for blue, but when they went for blue... Because I think, um, how much time do we have? 20 seconds. 20 seconds till we hit 17 minutes. Now, I think this has thrown off, um, somehow thrown off our uh, Happy Coder, our Lime Green player. We do not even have his gantry out yet. Normally, he has his gantry out, and he probably has one or two. Um, yeah, I think he probably went into uh, Tier 2 production to try to help out. It's possible. Yeah, he did. He went to Tier 2 production. I don't see his tier two factory anywhere, but he definitely went into tier two production. This will slow him down. This is a good response by him. I do like the response by him, but it definitely slowed it down because his tier three push would normally be coming out right now, but he is the only one that can push back this, this hound ball with his own hound ball. Ain't nothing but a hound ball. Oh, DMCA is going to kill me. We do have a slight pawn push coming through here. This can be devastating for uh, Nelson and Othex if left unchecked. And uh yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be left pretty pretty much unchecked. Unless Shurikens come in and keep a lot of significant damage from being done. Only three of those, I think, in those opinion can cause pretty big issues. But I still think uh yeah, start sucking them up, doing whatever you can, yeah. Um massive damage averted in my opinion. Could have been a lot worse. Shuriken's helping out, a fiend coming out, and a pretty clutch uh, sharpshooter, you know, doing what he can. Even like two or three of those being left alive could have caused a big deal. Um, they are voting for resign. I think this is a bad. Oh, no. I don't see the hound. Yeah. Blue's getting finished off. Yeah. Their red team is calling out. Look for their aphises. I don't think they're – yeah. The, the vote passed. It's GG. GG, no re. We know how it is. But, yeah, let me see if I can get my YouTube channel up for you guys. That way you're – well, hold on. Let me make sure I hit the lead button first. Let me make sure. Hold on one second. YouTube. Give me my channel. Boom, 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 boom. So this is my, I think this is a good way. I, I don't know exactly how to put my stuff in um, that, but I'll put it in my chat. I won't put it in the game chat. Let me make sure. So this is my YouTube for anybody that's interested. At least I'm pretty sure that's my YouTube. I'm not exactly sure. But um, 
Hopefully y'all don't mind. So let me make sure I get my Twitch now that I had to copy paste that. Oh, that's annoying. <laughs> so many things copy paste. I just had going. Just need to get a notepad going with all my socials on it. So let's see. Boop, 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 boop. All right. But yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for the great games. Like, I really enjoy it. I really enjoy it. Like, honestly, like, my stream has been growing so much. Uh, we did take a little bit of a hit yesterday, um, mainly because I feel like it wasn't really the best stream in the world. But it was still a fun slip. Dude, I'm glad, bro. Let me just add you, uh, Nelson. Let me add you, brother, because I know – oh, I'm a little late for that. Well, I'll tell you what, guys. I am going to take a quick little uh, five minutes just to make sure I'm hydrated, good to go, because yesterday I felt like crap because I wasn't hydrated enough. And, you know, um, so I want to make sure that I do feel a little better. So I don't want to get stuck in the same situation. So right now I'm going to zoom out. You all can see the position. Like, don't don't stream snipe. Don't fucking stream snipe. But yeah, I don't I don't encourage cheating or anything like that. But you know, in order to stream this game, live stream this game, which is what I want to do, I got to do what I got to do. You know, and if people are going to take advantage of it, it sucks. Call them out in game. Call them out in chat, and um, don't be a dick. A lot of people like to listen to me while I play. I try to keep anything strategic to a very minimum. Um, anything that's going on should be seen. Um, even things when I notice pushes, they're normally already spotted. But I just want you all to know that I really do absolutely try my best to make sure that I don't provide an unfair advantage to one or the other team. And if I'm calling out one team, you better believe the other team's getting called out. You know what I mean? Their shit's getting called out, too. I'm just not going to call out nukes. I'm not going to call it when a Ragnarok is going up or anything like that. I, you know, you know, I'm going to try my best to make sure stuff like that, the big stuff, is not known. Because you can't watch my stream and play at the same time, obviously. And if you are, yeah. it's Cryocore on the bar match. Oh, hey, Cryocore. Dude, like, <laughs> I'm glad you I'm glad you enjoyed the stream. I'm really glad. Um, I don't know if you're still in here, but I'm super stoked for you. And you know what? Feel free to hit me up. Everybody, if you want to, add me if you want. I do want to get to a point. <laughs> Good job holding that front and moving to this. Yes, yes. One OS, one Chev. He's got a good point. But um, like I was saying, um, add me because eventually I want to get to the point because some people might take offense to what the reason why I was saying earlier. But what we can do is start making our own lobby eventually where it's what where it's like stated in the title like you will be streamed you know but anyways i'll be right back i'm gonna go have myself a little bit of a drinky poo make sure i'm hydrated and uh you know please don't mind
All right, I am back. We are back with more Beyond All Reason action. We do have some ticks. This is something that has been develop developing in my streams lately. More and more use of ticks and scouting, and I'm really enjoying seeing the progression that is being shown by a lot of our players that are pretty uh, pretty uh, uh, regular to our stream. Um, fact of the matter is, is in any RTS, scouting is key. When I played StarCraft, you know, you basically built you, – your entire game was like every 30 seconds felt like you were scouting. Um, so um, scouting, eco damage, when, when and where you can't get it. We do have a little bit of a attempted run by that is shut down by our red player. Do Dan able to snipe the last of it? Very well done by our blue team. And uh, let's just say right now lines haven't been established. Bad bot uh, of, of Clan Bad, Mr. Bot, is going to be busting out to the front lines as soon as possible. Um, Chunk McGurthington's already at the front. So good on him. He was able to secure his 3.2 and put up a few defenses. So for a while, he will be able to make that 3.2 pay for itself and then some. The Nat, good old The Nat. Um, we all know The Nat, a veteran to the stream, marching forward. Um, let's just say the Nat probably it's, it's a path I wouldn't have taken. I don't know if a run by or something kind of put him off, but, but it's interesting. I want to see how this plays out throughout the game. Honestly, the way he did the, did it, he's doing it. I definitely want to see how that's going. Nine, seven, we're going to call him numbs numbers or Mr. Numbs or something like that. Nine, seven, four, six, two, five, eight, one, three. Marching out, taking out all, taking his all his um, mexes on the way out. This, you know, can give him an early advantage, but can also make it so Pine Mountain can um, contest a few of those, which he may not, may or may not do. Nelson and Dude Dan squaring off in the, in the front lines. There are some aggravators shelling the way at him. He is body blocking his turret, which not a bad decision. Um. At this point right now, it is going to be hard for that turret to stay alive, especially if, once again, there's no power, and he doesn't have power for a D-gun. So, yeah, late D-gun, it happens. Late D-gun. Wind is 16. I think that was, yeah. So, I think three, three, um, you, I think three combots on your bot lab is a bit of a mistake. It's going to eat up a ton of your power. And on top of it, you know, they could be – It's there's almost no difference in build speed. I would prefer one of those setting up windmills and one of those building a build power behind it and then going into more wind speed or some energy converters, just my personal opinion. Market Maker Mark uh, can always help support the front line. He, he understands the importance of securing this area. For as long as possible, it's not realistic to ask um, the canyon player to secure this forever, mainly because they are in a canyon and artillery, rockets, stuff like that can make it really hard. I do like the addition of some walls because walls can block rockets. Can. Doesn't mean they will, but it looks like Dude Dan is just not going to allow it to happen. And D-Gun's power, like I said, power for him is an issue. He needs to get take a second when he finds it. To just get one of these off and just get some windmills going. It's just too much. He doesn't have 500 energy. This There you go. Now he does. But then he gets it and it's gone. Oh, yeah. Nelson just having a little bit of a rough time. It looks like our green team able to secure the front. Uh, well, I wouldn't call a front secured just by ticks. Happy Coder saying that tier two is shop is now open for business. That's a pretty quick tier two. Pink being almost as quick. Red doing everything he can to help out with the front. We will see how this plays out. I do think that help with the front, even though needed, can turn into uh, a problem if done too much because you are going to need some of that eco, especially – if Thought Dog is able to start busting out Tier 2 in the near future. Um, Thought Dog, I don't think he watches my stream, so I am going to say 
out loud, uh, you know, I think right now producing units might not be um, the most efficient use of his time unless some damage, serious damage gets done. He could probably just be going for a tier two because tier two, he will have the advantage on that. He definitely, he it looks like he has probably more eco than red and uh, pink combined, in all honesty. Yeah. Yeah. Nelson just getting swarmed right now. The problem, yeah. The issue I'm having here is uh, with Thought Dog is it's mostly uh, agitators. And right now he won front. So you win front, you know, I would probably go more into maces or the equivalent of maces, thugs. For right now, because they're, they're similar. I think thugs are slightly more expensive, which I do see coming out. I do see coming out. But this is more of a, well, you know what? If, if thought, not thought dog, what was it? Um, do Dan. Do Dan. Thought dog has actually got that, that covered. I think it's fine. I just, you know. I'm I'm a stickler, you know. I have my ways. I'm like, okay, I want to go into this, but thought dog hasn't covered. Good job. Basically, blue just being allowed to uh, being allowed to pretty much do whatever the heck they want at this moment in time. Um, Aggress has got his got his front line secured. Oh, 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 but red does have a tier one push, a massive tier one push going. Into the back, into right into the production, but D guns. I think that was a massive. I went, I'm not even gonna call that misclick, just brain fart, by because there was so much potential there. We do have aggressive going for a little bit of a push on the front lines. Um, I think he has enough to push through because this is mostly artillery and only. Is it mostly artillery? No, there's there's a few stouts in there. I think he pretty much, yeah, he nuked their artillery. There's only one artillery piece. So I think this is just goes more into securing. He's not going to have to worry about anything on his front line for a minute. I think losing that massive tier one, like uh, grunt push. Was this grunt pawns? They're so, they look, yeah, grunt. Losing that massive grunt push to a few D guns, just, I think that was, that was, that was opportunity wasted. Um, what else is going on? It, it's pretty static right now. <clears throat> blue team, blue team in my mind has dominated this phase mainly because of Canyon. <clears throat> um, and but I does look like red player though was able to push Pine Mountain off of his line. And they took out his his uh his lab. He was forced to rebuild his lab further back. This is a bit of a uh, this is a bit of a problem for uh, blue. There is a uh, there is a bulge in the lines, and it looks like red player was is able to take advantage of it. Ooh, taking out those like until that until that uh, fusion reactor goes up. This. Oh, Going clutch with the freaking shurikens, our uh, our our uh, cyan player. Good call, good call. Dude, why do you? Well, I think there's a reason for it. I think it's to get. For one, you can um build a uh, if you have a bot lab back here, uh, and you build a factory a uh, a vehicle lab up here. You have a mixture of like say uh uh. Mace it. Let's pretend like uh, grunts. Like, like grunts in my mind are superior to pawns, but you can get more artillery units too. Grunts and uh, grunts and the artillery. And artillery is slow, so closer to the front line can 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 help you out with that. It is a calculated risk that can be uh, that can pay off, but it is something I think people don't look at the situation that they're in. And they just turn it into the regular build. This is something that you have to uh, think about before you do. It's not just something you just do. But we do have Tier 2 coming out from Wally Marts. Looks like there should be a little bit of a push. Where, oh, where, oh, where this push is going, we don't know. I think we're going to find out very shortly for our red team. Yeah. 
Red team should know by now that there, there's hounds on the front line. But this is – they picked the, the, the most fortified portion of the front line to attack. So I have no idea if these grunts can really do anything. And they're, they're spaced out just enough to where, like, I don't think the splash damage from their uh, – from their um, heavy plasma is going to really do more and take out more than one at a time. But still, it's free. It's it's a trade. It's a it's a winning trade. It's it's basically a free win. Take take what you can where you can. These grunts, they're going to get decimated. Yeah, you know, you're just giving away. You're just yeah, you just lost like twenty of them. Uh, good old Mr. Numbers just, you know, throw, kind of throwing away some grunts. Um, this would have been better used, probably supporting this little push, which we do have, ooh, a fat boy. I don't think I've casted a, a game that had a fat boy in it. Well, this is going to be quite interesting because fat boys, they do, they're, they, this will be great in Canyon, especially, problem is getting them to Canyon because look at that blast radius, right? Let's see. Let's see if we can find out. We can't. But their blast radius is something like this. And it's devastating. Yeah. See, didn't didn't even come close to it and, and still blew it up. A nice mixture of recluses and fat boys along with welders. Yeah. I like what he did here. He didn't just pump out one unit. He made sure he had a nice, healthy mixture. And this push could cause some issues for chunk mcgirthington especially if we do not have any tier two support coming in from wally marts because his tier two is at the front but he could come in and pinch it problem is once again there's a fat boy there and fat boys in a canyon versus hounds one fat boy versus the wrong the wrong engagement that fat boy will win that believe it or not so i have to be very 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 careful uh, you know what? Some shurikens on that fat boy might not be a bad call. <laughs> There's another issue with the fat boy. A bad a bad shot goes into the ground and blows up a good chunk of it, the army. Yeah. Yeah, but watch. Let's see. This is ouch. Yeah. The wrong engagement. Fat boy wins that. I don't know what happened to the fat boy, but yeah, he's down. He's down, but not without getting his value for sure. All right, so we're approaching the 15-minute mark. I think I'm going to check on good old Happy Coder, which is this gentleman right here. Yeah, he's well on his way. He's well on his way. He is uh, He is building a little bit of air defense. I think he is. Yeah, I think he saw, yeah. He saw basically his air player just get annihilated, and now... The good news is I don't think uh, I don't think Cyan has any bombers out. Yeah, but Mister Numbers pretty much gone. We do have a push coming out from Aggressa. Aggressa, goddamn, you are aggressive. <coughs> you, you when you chose your gamer name, you chose correctly, good sir. Good job. You pretty much. Ooh. You did a lot, but was it enough? That is the question. That is the question. You didn't cripple the air player, but good old numbers is dead. <laughs> well, for right now, at least. You're only dead when, when you give up. We do have pink pushing out with what looks like hounds. It's not good. It's not good. Giving it his best. He should be able to catch this, but he's kind of diverting it into, yeah, aggressive, aggressive, might be able to get some damage done here. He is going to run into a little bit of resistance, looks like. Oh, yeah, there's a little bit of resistance, but he can pull some stuff off here if done right. <laughs> Aggressive just, he's he pushes, builds up for a push, and then pushes some more. I like it. I think Aggressive knows the timing. I think he, I think right now he, I, now I can't speak for Aggressive, but what I can tell him is, um, what I can say is he's probably thinking uh, 17 minutes, it's time to do some damage. And if I don't do some damage, bad things happen. Along with that push, we do feel we do see Chunk McGurthington getting some levels of his own, along with his own tier two push from Wally Marts. 
was able to take out the commander at the front lines. But with this pink uh, player coming in, he, they are going to be forced back. Resign, I suggest. Uh, maybe when a little bit more damage gets done. Things can stable out. I've seen games get get like this where it looks like it's over, then the lines stable out, people are able to get back to normal, and then um, next thing you know, you're 30 minutes in and a rag, 30 more minutes in and the Ragnarok's being built somewhere. We do have some another commander seems to go down. Ouchies. That was the commander for our goal player, I believe. We have fiends starting to hit the field, trying to push back this. Now fiends are a good call. They can they can pretty much be put anywhere they're needed. Issue is they're a bit squishy and their damage is more over time. Lots of stuff happening right now. We do see a bit of a force coming up for aggressive again. I would not be surprised to see another push come out from him. I'm not sure. Dude Dan doing his Dulius and Danlius to push even further into the canyon. Um, right now. Maybe it may be stopped for the time being. We'll see. We'll see. Depends on what Pink decides to do. Nelson, right now for 18 minutes in, I would like to see a little bit more economy. Probably a bit of a newer player, which is fine. You know, we're all allowed to be new. He does have two chevrons, you know. Solar and air. Yeah, could be a bit more economy by this point, but same can be said for his uh, support. And same can be said for everybody, even Happy Coder, you know. So we are at 19 minutes. There is a Tier 3 push coming to the front lines. Coming from our good friend Happy Coder once again. But there is a little bit of counter Tier 3 from what looks like to be Zethrid. Zethrid Proven to be pretty good at himself with his own pushes. I need to probably pay a little bit more attention to him. He is going on a second Aphis. Second Aphis already completed for um, Happy Coder. Now let's see what he decides to do. Now that it's pretty much, it's pretty close to even as far as tier three Marauders. Does he keep going or does he start equaling even more? For right now, it looks like he is keeping to go. There is no yes, there is no anti nuke on the for the red side. Yeah, excuse me, at least for right now. At least for right now. Oh, so let's see what we got going on. Anything in the chat? Nothing GS yet. Cryocore. <sighs> got to keep that name in mind so I can keep her if I see her in, in uh, any more games. <coughs> Basically a bigger version of who's going to hold the line, just Tier 3 versus Tier 3 instead of Tier 1 and 2 versus Tier 1 and 2. This game has all the hallmarks of what could potentially be what could potentially be um, um, a longer game. The fact of the matter is, despite all we saw, only one player is right now um, devastated, and that is Mr. Numbers, our gold player. Right now, we do have a we do have a hound push coming into the canyon. Um, not the not the wrong decision, but you need to see it like this right here. Now they're just getting picked off by a, a, hall, uh, a ball, a hound ball. Good job by Aggressa recognizing the situation and seeing it at his advantage. Even though he is going against hounds, his uh, heavy assault tanks were able to get in position while I believe our pink player was kind of sleeping. Red player was able to help out. A little bit trying to negate those losses. Now let's check out the metal uh, situation on the field. There are 7.28k uh, on the field next to the canyon uh, for uh, for Blue Team's canyon. Red Team's canyon has 5.2k in their canyon. Front line where the tier three is fighting is 4.45k. So altogether, there is a decent amount of metal out in the field. Right now, I don't think any player at the moment has the ability to capture it. Unless, you know, some sneaky shenanigans happens. Market Maker doing his absolute darndest to try to get something going. The fact that he is able to use 
the canyon to to kind of stall you down is 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 good he's doing a good job with that the problem with uh the canyon also is like it does offer opportunity for uh for cover and does opportunity offer opportunity for like little sneaky run buys like what's trying to happen here maybe he might be able to get the snipe on this commander especially if the commander misses yeah going invisible yeah that's the right might be the right decision yeah it was the right decision he would never have caught it but i don't see anything stopping these um these tanks from doing some serious damage to our canyon players right now maybe this one czar czar versus tiger i think the czar i think the czar is going to prevent damage yeah you want the commanders in the canyon you want the commanders in a place where they could do some serious damage to any forces that come by we have seen massive pushes be stopped in the canyons by commanders plenty of time um this r is going to be very important right now see what happens between see that's just a massive shot yeah plus a little help from nelson's commander they win almost taking no damage doing no damage Nice try by Dudan. I like the thought. But right now, it's just too tight of a spot. He just doesn't have the forces to really do any more damage. Um, there becomes a point where you don't want to feed your enemy. So you want to make sure you secure the, secure the ability that nothing is going to get onto the field and eat up that metal. And you don't want to leave metal in a place where they can eat it and kind of come back. Because right now he does have this. It, it, it is his. As of right now, we do have a massive force coming out from our Lion Green player. It is a really big ball. He does have anti-radar. and ra I like the inclusion of the radar because if we take a look, player view, it gives them a massive, pretty much, yeah, the Hounds can see their entire, almost their entire range. And that radar bot is going to keep anything from being able to hit them without seeing them. So... The, the correct response is indeed going to be sharpshooters, in my opinion. But I think one sharpshooter is just not going to do it. Welders just can't touch him. He's doing pretty much what I do. Just get him in range, do damage, don't give anything for free. Um, take as much advantage of the range as possible. These sharpshooters, though, starting to come out into a number where they will shut down hounds. So if I am if I am Wally Mart, I am saying no more hounds. I am probably going into what would I go into versus sharpshooters? Because it is such a weird matchup. <coughs> spy bots. Get a couple spy bots. Self detonate them on, on the line. Anti radar, which he already has. What would I go into? You could go sprinters, but you don't want to go sprinters into uh, hounds too, into hounds and that. You want to be able to take out that. Well, you could get your um, – I would say right now hounds are okay, but you definitely want to – I think a, a spy bot, maybe his own um, – maybe his own sharpshooters because he, he does a better job of getting vision in my opinion. Could be the call. The Nat. This might be a funny. I think the Nat might be uh, taking a little bit of inspiration from me the other day. <laughs> no, I don't think he saw the game I played yesterday. I, I think that was, yeah, that was funny. But, ooh, there was a spy bot detonation on those hounds. That is quite nice. And these marauders are going to be able to march in and take advantage of the situation to at least some degree. To at least some degree. They're going to be down for at least another four seconds. Yeah, that's a big loss for Wally Marks. Sharpshooters starting to get even more into uh, much more impressive numbers. He is using – I never use cloak abilities on this thing only because I forget. Only because I forget. 
It's not because I think it's useless or anything like that, but yeah. And using that those hounds as a uh, deterrent. Oh, very nice. Mwah. Well done, our pink player. Let's find your commander. Do you even have your commander? This commander may be dead. It's all right. I will go up to your Aphis and go, mwah, mwah, mwah. Good job. Excellent use. Looks like he is making a good attempt to hide those, so I will not I will not say much more. I think this is a bad I don't know. Yeah, you're just giving away units for free at this point. You just give away units for free. He he is more than happy to trade ground for uh for metal, for for your units. He is definitely keeping a close eye on his units. And he is macroing back home. This is nice. So a lot of times when you see people micro like this, they are not macroing back at home, but in fact our pink player is. Welders are not a bad call, especially with what he has right now, because he does have enough right now. If he can kind of bolster this, it will turn into a composition that is very, 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 very deadly. We do have some starlights on the field. I do like those being included. Market maker trying his best to push forward. Canyon being contested at the moment. Um, what do we got going on for Dudan? Do, well, Thought Dog is just going to march Tier 1 into the canyon until until Doomsday. We got our very first Aphis coming up for Dudan. Do Dan, um, right now, I think they, it's not an Aphis, it's a, it's a fusion reactor. Um, I like it. I think he could have, uh, could have gone for it one a little bit sooner, but he has been very, 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 very busy and he has one in his lane so far. So I'm not going to complain. Good job. It will help out quite a bit, especially once he gets his converter up. Once he gets his converter up, it's going to help out quite a lot. It's going to be able to build faster. And honestly, the egos for his opponents are not are not that great. Even the support player is like almost it barely is uh matching his uh is not is barely is barely above uh dude Dan's eco. Jesus Christ, our blue player is going on his fourth Aphis. Pine Mountain just being because of because of um Xanthrid's just ability to hold the line. Pine Mountain just able to eco up himself quite nicely. He is only one eco behind his his uh back line player. One Aphis behind his uh his eco player. This is ridiculous. Which honestly, it's very possible if given the opportunity. This was very wise. He pumped out enough starlights. Is he still pumping out starlights? That's a question. No, he's not. He's equaling like a madman, which I am all for. Do it, bro. Do it, bro. At the same time, gold player getting back on his feet. Um, he can actually take advantage of the fact that that Happy Coder has pretty much done the same thing for him. Happy Coder, though, he is in his groove right now. He has switched to the Cortex uh, Aphis, which from what I hear is a bit more efficient than the, than the Advanced Fusion Reactor. It's a bit more cost efficient to build it than the Advanced Fusion Reactor for uh, for Armada. So, they, you know, we all know Happy Coder. Oh, it's cheaper to build? Correct. So, yeah, being cheaper to build means probably faster to build, which basically, you know, just better. Just better. So... Do we really expect anything less from Happy Coder at this point? But at this point with eight Aphises, what are these, Sharpshooters? You know what? I do like it. He's got enough Marauders. Sharpshooters right now, because right now the biggest threat from blue is going to be Thor's. It's going to be... Maybe catapult like catapults are pretty, you know. It looks like both teams are going into a more defensive stance. But I would say Thor's um Razorbacks, maybe Titans. Those are your bigger threats right now. Sharpshooters just deal with them nicely. And so having this many sharpshooters out in the field, it's gonna be able to help out with any of their bigger threats. 
right now their biggest threat is canyon so they want to be able to control this canyon now you want to know the, listen red team's biggest threat I, I don't know if i should say it but i know what red team's biggest threat is but i don't think blue team is going to be able to capitalize on it let's just say i would like to see blue team capitalize on it but oh can they let me see all right come on where is it no they're they don't let's just say they uh, no that's not it they at least don't have it at the front but it, it, it is there one player on your team that i haven't on blue team that i haven't really talked about a whole lot <laughs> Yeah. And it looks like you're about to find out. Because. No, no. I do think one of your players, one of your player, one of Red Team's players is not matching up. One of one of your team's players is not matching. Let, let's 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 pretend. Um What's one of the quickest ways to end the game? One of the quickest ways to end the game that's not a nuke. Well, no, you, you got a happy cutter. You know there's Zico. There's it's not nuke. It's not It's not a tier three push or anything like that. Let's just say, um, all right, I'll just say it. I'll just say it. Um, because I know this player is not listening to me. And nobody better say anything in chat. But let, okay, I will say this: he is one of the he is the only player that's streaming tier one into doing a tier one um, um spam into uh, no no he is the heaviest tier one spam going into red's base right now. He could end this if he really wanted to. Well, he could end this if. Because he has a lot. Your air player is nothing compared to his air player right now. That's what I'm going to tell him. Yeah. That's a little. But I don't want to. That's a shitty thing. It's like it's like I see it and I, ha I want to call it out. That's the issue I'm having. Wow, that's a lot. A lot going on in the front line. We do have demons, tier three pushes. I don't think anything's going to happen, mainly because of all the starlights and martyrs in the front line pop up turrets. Yeah, it's it's gone nuts, dude. <clears throat> it's gone nuts, dude. Yeah, I feel bad for pointing that out, but I don't think he's going to try anything. Elias doing his best to pump stuff out. Um, I just right now, I don't think he has an ego for it. Yeah. And um, what's this player's name? Yeah. A newer. A newer. A newer definitely ha is just out ecoed Elias to every extreme. Backline for, uh, back for red team is just right now superior. As far as their economics go, it's just the way it is. That's the game we got here. But this push could be devastating if they could actually get some ground. I don't know if they can, though. Yep, catapults. Pretty much, they got everything. Yeah. I don't know. Like, there's a Thor to the front lines. They are trying. Blue team is is making some progress, though. But with all these uh, sharpshooters, who knows? But the spam is eating up a lot of the sharpshooter shots. Wow, this map looks insane. Look at look at look at this map. I don't know where to begin. 
like the easiest place for me to begin talking about the canyon because it's just you know it's the only place without a bajillion units. I will say, well done. I thought Nelson and Market Maker were pretty much toast earlier in the game. It's not going to ask it for a pause. I think we all can use a little bit of break before we all have a seizure. Be perfectly fair. It's not going to ask you for something to be given back. Oh, that's a lot to give back. How much in... Was that on purpose? <laughs> Was that on purpose? Yeah, he gave everything to Snot Gun. Yeah, yeah, he's got it all. I'm not exactly, yeah, I'm not exactly sure what happened. Oh. Tan, Tan had that. I think it was to help help his um, economy, so he get a leg up. Okay, okay, I see what I kind of see what happened here. So Snot Gun did something pretty unique. I've never seen it before. He gave up pretty much all his eco, and pretty much. Oh my God, here it comes. This is what I was afraid of. This is what I was afraid of, and the only reason I felt. I felt okay with like kind of giving it up because I didn't think orange could do anything or there was any amount of anti-air that could be put up to kind of stop this. And this is what I was worried about right as he gave it back too. Oh man. Yeah. That's what I was worried about. Like that's the reason why I was saying like uh blues uh, air player was a lot was going to be the factory. I didn't want to call it out, but I sat there and thought about it. I was like, even if I didn't call out, if he went, if he went, there there was no stopping it. Not yet, at least. Now they do have the build power to throw up a ton of stuff. At least the back line does. Um, they can put up a lot of. Uh, I would stop producing tier one units and start producing like uh, crossbows and stuff. If I were them, but I don't know. I don't know. It was a good game. You're still playing because it's not over yet. It might be. You want to see if this does how much damage this does, first and foremost. Because pink going down right now is not the worst thing in the world. But I think if pink goes down, the chain reaction is going to pretty much screw over uh, Happy Coder. Yeah. Knew it. Oh, almost. Saved all his aphises. Problem is he has no metal um, income now. Well, no, he still has no income. Well, there was a little bit of a buffer that saved him. <laughs> what do I think? I think uh, right now he never got past Marauders. And this is something I saw Happy Coder do before in the past, which is fine. You know, he didn't really get past Marauders. There was a point where, like, uh, I think he did for a little bit. I'm not sure. I think he may have had a Thor out here or there. But I think uh, <clears throat> there was a point where he could have comfortably made Razorbacks and just, like, done a couple pushes, could have turned the tide of the game. But I think you guys were kind of screwed from the beginning just because, like, you had, to, you had to scout this Air Force in order to kind of prepare for it. And it just was never scouted because – I zoomed out. I saw all that blue on the map, and I was like, "Oh fuck yeah, yeah, that's it, GG." And he got, and, the, and it only was a matter of time before he noticed. Only a matter of time. But good game by everyone involved. It's just little simple stuff like scouting and knowing what's going on. You know, that's that's what's gonna cause these issues. Um, so. So once again, like every game, I try to thank everybody because there are there are new players every single game. So some people may be like he does this every after every game. Well, yeah, because there's new players every game. Dog pooping in the snow. 
<laughs> that's a pretty that's a pretty sweet name. Dog creeping in the snow. We did lose a few players. Dude, Dan's no longer a part, which is fine. Oh, well, looks like he went offline. That's fine. Have yourself a good night, dude, Dan. Thank you for stopping by. We do have a lot of spectators. Jim Jams is spectating. We have uh, we definitely played with and against Jimmy Jams, and I'm pretty sure I've streamed him before. He's definitely a good player. You can definitely tell. He's language. True skill 24.19. Two chevrons in the dovetail. That's a lot of hours played. Good job on him. Now the question is, do we stay in this lobby? I know Thanat and Aggressor are still in here. So let's see. Let's see what other lobbies are available at the moment. There is a Supreme Smith lobby I could stream. There is a uh, no, this is it. I think this is the lobby. People will it will pick up. In the meantime, it gives me a moment to kind of just like, you know, go potty, relax, you know, all that. Hope you all don't mind. I know I do it quite often, but you know, it's like whatever. Ain't nothing going on right now. So lots of love. But um for the future of the stream, Supreme is fun. Yes, I agree. It's a bit harder to cast because there's a lot more variables put in. Um, especially since I don't I'm not the big I don't know a lot about Navy. Like it is kind of the same, but it's kind of not. But on top of it, like it's like there's one choke, and then you're casting what's going on in the navy, and then you're pretty much like, yeah, I think Supreme would be a be a good switch. Maybe later tonight. Um, we are uh, at 14 players, so only two more players. One more player until this game is going to get started up. Two more players now, but. But this is a good opportunity to plug my stream. Sorry, I'm gonna be pretty ruthless about it because I do want to grow. I think, and I think everybody here wants me to grow because the more I grow, the like, dude, we get so much fun together, don't we? When we know everybody and we're having fun, we get like aggressive, aggressive than that. All of them are on the same team, right? And so when we get to know each other, we get to know about each other, and like we all engage together. The community is just so much funner, right? Tell like, like it's so nice. Um, well, it's up to you guys. I'm going to have no say in it. Surprise me. But yeah, feel free to stop. Like if you're in this lobby, I mean, like what I'm going to say for this. Yeah. But what I'm going to tell everybody is like, you know, like I want you to enjoy my commentary and I also want you guys to enjoy each other because I don't know if aggressa. And then that, like maybe they do, maybe they become friends, but I don't know if they do become friends without like this going on. You know, they, they got themselves. Stop being curious. I will, I will do what I do. Relax. <laughs> Stop encouraging strange snipers. Nobody's like, honestly, for one, for one, nobody's getting any advantage from my stream. How dare I? How dare I stream a public game? Listen, there, there's a solution. There, 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 there is a solution. Go to another lobby. <laughs> there is a solution. Go to another lobby. I make sure I. It is no. No, I'm not. I'm not sitting here. Yeah. Um, Nat 97, I have to time to watch and play at the same time, right? You do have time to watch and play at the same time, you know, but the fact of the matter is like, like I said, if you don't listen for one, it's a new lobby, you know, we can't, we can't pretend like it's like super competitive and like anybody's winning like $5 million off of the game that I stream for two, um, anything that I say, you should have scouted, you should have scouted. So like, let's say, uh, 
and I'm not purposely putting in information that, like, I'm not going to tell you when nukes come up, Ragnaroks, anything like that. And I try to time pushes, like when I when I notice a push coming out, I try to time it so, so um, so that it's already been scouted. So I'm like, you know, there's already like blitzes engaging it, so on and so forth. Um, the biggest thing is is like I don't want to encourage cheating at all, obviously, right? Like you don't want to encourage cheating at all, but how do I do this without? How do I how how do I do this? Which is what I want to do, which I should be able to do, which I am allowed to do, without giving somebody an unfair advantage that wants to take that unfair advantage. How? I don't know. I don't know. I want. I don't want to. You know. I I don't know. I don't care. But the fact of the matter is. Fact of the matter is. We all like. If you're worried about it, then be good enough to overcome come it. That's all I can say about it. Because the fact of the matter is, it's a public lobby. Spectating is legal. And I let you know that I'm doing it, right? I let you know that I'm doing it. Now, you could, anybody could be on Discord with their buddy and spectate and not let you know they do it. You know? And so, like, I, like and I'm not in game. I'm not, and I'm not in game. I have no say over what goes on in the game. Like, for some reason, from all the games I've casted through these streams, it has not seemed like it's made a fucking lick of difference. <laughs> anything I've, anything that's happened on my stream, straight up, straight up, anything that's happened on my stream, nobody's been like, like, oh look, there's an opening, and just like ran a bunch of blitzes through it or anything like that. These games have always been very well contested, were very well played by these guys, so. You know, just relax on that. Um, to to the worry about stream sniping, you know, whatever, whatever. It's done every day. There's nothing I can do about it. And I, I actually, I actually did think about um, think about like casting from like one player's perspective, and I was like, no, because if the, the other players on the other team, they could get a fair advantage. So whatever. I might as well make it so everybody can do it. So everybody could be a douchebag. And honestly, then if you're doing it, you need to have like a, you need to have a look in the mirror and like, like feel bad for that person. You got a fucking stream snipe to win a game of a beyond all reason. Like I love beyond all reason, but come on, it's not StarCraft two or anything like that. But anyways, let's introduce our players. Zeph at the front line, going to the front of the canyon. Jimmy Jam is going to be his right hand man. Sloth Demon going to be just left of him. We do have of Clan Bad. Mr. Bot, ADSWRX, going to be supporting him. Mr. Numbers, right behind him. Suavocado, going to be going for his eco position. Snot Gun, going for the support position. We'll see how he does there. Dog Poop in the Snow, going for the Canyon. Go Dexter Double X, supporting him. Cat as our air player. Cottagen. Which I'm hoping I said that right. Going to be our ego player today. Thanat going to be going for the right hand support position. Aggressa going to be holding the front of the canyon. Sweaty Fish going to be his, well, his right hand man. And T of Clan TUV, someone supposed to respond for bad win. <laughs> and it's a pretty shitty win, no doubt. And it's picking up, though. Of Clan TUV, we have Philip K. All right, so as things get started, I'm thinking about putting this on. Yeah, more wind turbines. <laughs> well, if it's going up, yeah. But it's going back down. So when it's like this, you might want to get like two solar panels up just in case because this is pretty volatile. Good to hear. All right, we do... Have some pretty good awareness from some players. Zef getting out a Lazarus, being able to pick up some of these rocks. Good on him. More Lazarus coming out. I do like a game where people are bringing, busting out their uh, their Lazaruses and Resbots and so on and so forth. It does make it, it is more of a high level game, which you know normally is not what. I am going for because I do like I like playing with noobs. Noobs are fun. I'm a noob. I'm a noob. I have a good time. 
honestly, everybody here could probably kick my ass. Looks like this push out was spotted by our blue team. Let's see if they get an eco damage done. With some good micro, I don't know, Ken. Yeah, that, that's, that micro is just really good. Good job on him, just splitting that. Mm. He does want to get some he does want to get some damage done, especially with the amount of ticks he has. Just because even though it's not the biggest investment in the world, it is an investment. <coughs> Getting scouting done is is a good way to uh Getting scouting done is a good way to get value out of him. Especially knowing that he will be able to tell whether or not. Ouch. <laughs> now, I do think that was worth it. I do think it was worth it. I think five ticks for a couple of energy converters. But the energy converters are only, um, yeah, you are very lucky, good sir. But, um, yeah, honestly, and maybe they got their value. They did get their value out because he did have to build them. But it was barely getting their value out. He did get some scouting done, and he did some very, very, very minor damage. I think he could have done a bit more. But what can you do? We do have a blitz coming out on the right-hand side that has been pinged out from our line green player to nap. <laughs> All right. With the floaty commander. All right. We do have what looks like our front line starting to be established. One max going down for our pink player. We do have what looks like a couple of rascals in the back line of, oh, he's eating it. Oh, he got a quitter. Where? Yeah, it could be lag. Yeah, it's got to be lag. No, who who would quit right now? Who would quit right now? Who would quit right now? Well, I'm twenty four second delay. Okay, yeah, Kevin Supreme looks like a yeah. It looks like we're, oh, we're getting back into it. I think uh, I think dog pooping in the snow. Was the one that was lagging quite a bit, kind of uh, put it had to put up the game on hold. I don't want to go too much on what is being said in chat. Kind of see what's going on. Maybe I will draw a line. Boop, 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 boop. No. Oh, I was wondering why they weren't staying. There we go. <laughs> Cow prefers. Sweaty fish. Uh, I think pretty much they're discussing their strengths and or weaknesses at the point. And in, in the moment, I would have to agree with them. The problem... The problem I have here is like it's just hard. Like it's so hard to do what they're what is being proposed. It is so hard to do it. All right, well let's check a look at our eco players. See how they're doing. Looks like our orange player looks like he's about on track for where he wants to be at the moment. I do like the inclusion of energy storage. You do see a lot of players forgetting their energy storage quite often. Very wise, grab it. He did, he did start out with a few uh, solar collectors off the bat. It's very wise. You don't want to play Russian roulette with your eco. Simple as that. Detonating a commander. Good to know. Numbers is just going to town with his uh, wind production right now, which sucks because it's 2.2, 2.1. And just dropping, we're gonna see point wind in <laughs> just a second. But luckily, it wasn't there for too much longer. But it's staying at two. Wind sucks. Staying at two is just really rough. Dog pooping in the snow, doing his best the whole line. But I don't think that 
I think the wind is definitely hindering him a little bit. We have artillery move to the front for uh, Zeph. This right here should be contested, in my opinion. He could help counter artillery this, but I think he is content just, you know, scooching back a little bit. I can't tell 100%. I think it might be wise to scoot back just, you know, uh, no, he's moving forward. He's going to try and counter artillery. Um, there were, yeah, yeah. He's going to try to. The fact that he is able to get a uh, turret up is going to be helpful. He can degun down some of this stuff. It is possible, especially since there is no commander at the front. Yeah. Wise decision by Mr. Doggy Poopin. Oh, and he denies the 3.2. Very nice. Wow. Good job. Good job, Mr. Poopin. I thought, honestly, I was thinking it might have been wise to scooch back, but he saw no commander, and he made a calculated decision. Red was a little slow in the response. Um, even just being able to um, have a uh, laser tower out just means he's not he's going to be able to die. It. And yeah, he's Red can't Red can't do anything at it with just four Rocketeers at the moment. Another commander goes down for our red team. This was calculated. <sighs> for right now, we just have Canyon Battle. Lions are pretty stable. Three big twos are being contested, and 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 uh, and you know this is uh, one of the rare occasions where most of the team has most most of the three point twos have either been taken or they're being contested instead of just not paying attention to at all. The only person that hasn't taken the three point two or even tried to take the three point two is going to be Mister uh, Sweaty Fish which I'm not sure exactly what's going on with him, but he's trying. He does have – oh, he took over. Oh, I know what's happening. He's the one that took over. He took over this entire base. It was either kick ban or um, or uh, or just uh, he, he left, was in fact a lever. So, yeah. I think Mr. Sweaty Fish uh, made a, a good call here in taking this because obviously I think his weaker player – now it is a noob lobby. It is a noob lobby. I think kick banning noobs just because they're noobs is kind of the fucking dick move because where the hell else are they supposed to go? Where the hell else were you supposed to go when you were a noob, you know? But right now, I don't think that's the case. I just think there's a lever. But it, it honestly, having the extra economy is not necessarily a bad thing. And having the the utility that comes with having Cortex, no, he has two vehicle plants. You could add a little bit more versatility, but I'm not going to complain. Having more of anything is always great. We do have tier two. Uh, no, no, that's not tier two. We have tier one thugs pushing against red. I do like this decision. I do like this decision because um, Dog Poop in the Snow has secured his front and even advanced a bit. Um, God Eater is, um, has uh, made a calculated decision to uh, help out a probably the weaker side right now, but at the same time, it does not seem like the weaker side. You know what I mean? In fact, there's almost no contention on this front line from from our red players. There's almost no contention whatsoever. And I don't think at this point in the game, 20, 32 uh, Rocketeers are gonna, going to contest Dolphin. I mean, dog pooping. Like, yeah, they'll take down a lot of this defense. But right now, you want a breakthrough because he's just going to do it again. Zeph right now is kind of SOL. You need something that's going to be able to hold pushes and breakthroughs. And it's not Rocketeers, I can tell you that. So what does he go right now? Right now, it looks like he is starting to go with, uh, well, I'm not going to say right now, but he did make a little bit of a tech change. So maybe it is a, it is, maybe he is making the right move. 
Dog pooping in the snow just on it. The second his commander took a hit, boom, moving. Very well done. This canyon, in my opinion, is just, yeah. Yeah. We do have uh, some tier two coming out for some team somewhere. The Nat doing his absolute best to keep some pressure on this uh, canyon along with Agressa. I do like the team up of Thanat and Agressa. I think it can be quite quite uh, potent. Thanat with his very, very, um, very strong, but very strong and imposing gameplay, and Agressa with his uh, versatility could prove to be a very, 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 very strong team. But right now, dog pooping in the snow, and Jimmy, J uh, Jimmy, J Jimmy James is just trying his best to hold. Just to hold basically his line and uh, Zeph's line. He's trying his absolute best. And Zeph is not producing units. Zeph is producing no units. He has. Yeah. Sorry to say, but Zeph is just static defenses. Now, at this point, I'm not I'm not against the way Zeph's playing. I'm not against um. Oh shit. Looks like we do have a bit of an air attack coming in from our air player. Ooh, this can cause some issues. This can take – oh, yeah, that's a lot of eco just gone. Numbers down. This is why I always – like, listen, you can do some damage against me definitely with a bombing run, but not with one bombing run because, like, I space out my stuff like kind of like uh, how Orange is doing right here. Like – yeah, that was too juicy for him to pass up. But yeah, that that hurt. That hurt their air. And the thing is, like, yeah, air player is now down. Air player is now down for our red players. This is just more blue imposing their will right now. And who? Stream sniping ain't gonna do shit for this. <laughs> Maybe if it was a bit higher level gameplay, then yeah, you know. But it's that's another reason why I probably shouldn't do higher level gameplays. I I don't know if I like uh yeah he really wanted to get that uh he really wanted to get that uh, aggravator or agitator but yeah it's going to stay up problem is pink player right now no well, he's starting to produce units he's starting to produce some units it's going to help but right now from what I'm seeing I don't know like, this is about the most dominating game I've seen come for, for a minute. This is going to be rolled up. Now, despite losing most of his eco, there is actually an Air Force up. That is actually pretty nice. Good for him. I'm happy for him. Good job, numbers. ADSWRX now starting to go into the route where I was expecting him to get to eventually. In fact, we do have tier... I'm not going to say it because I don't want to get too too cray cray but i do like i do like the inclusion there is a fat boy out in the field somewhere which i love fat boys because i'm a fat boy we do have a push being stalled out by some shurikens shurikens great at stalling out a push sweaty fish looks like he is starting to have a little bit of health issues with one of his commanders one of his many commanders <laughs> Dog poop asking for a sale. Does he only have tier two, tier one? Man, he's just been killing it with just tier one, it looks like. Yeah, just tier one. Looks like we do have more uh, shurikens out in the field being able to help out a little bit with this push into the canyon. Yeah, you're going to want to degun him right now. All right, he already, no, no, he was already taken care of. Already taken care of. Good on him, collecting the metal. Nice job. Now, dog pooping in the snow is, is, he would like to see a breakthrough. And I would like, and if I was him, I would like to see a breakthrough as well. Main reason is you don't want to give people too much of a foothold because then crazy shit happens. Bottom run in the canyon. Nice job by our, uh, by numbers actually actually kind of coming back 
he thought thought the Air Force was pretty much would pretty much be dead. But yeah, his uh, Air Force is now kind of making a bit of a of a difference. There's our push. That's the push I was kind of alluding to. I didn't want to make it too obvious. But there is a push coming through the front, and it is looking like it's going to do some sort of damage to good old Sloth Demon. Sloth Demon just getting – his line's just collapsing. It just collapsed. It was. I don't think there was any, like <laughs> – Yeah, like I don't think there was any resistance whatsoever. I don't think there was any, any resistance whatsoever. I am a fat boy. I got a little chip on cheeks. We have Blop Sun in the chat. I like to welcome you to the chat, even though I don't know if that was set out of being just funny or just being mean. But yeah, true. I am a fat boy. Chubby cheeks, yo. Boom. <laughs> but truth be told, it does look like there was at least some damage, if not all the damage done to pretty much most of the front line. Um, there was very little resistance, and it was it was kind of predictable. Um, it was just, honestly, to tell the truth, you could tell some players in here were new, which is fine. <laughs> oh, dude, be a big meanie. Be a big meanie. Just as long – hey, man, just as long as they ain't anything going to get me banned or anything like that, I'll be perfectly happy. Um, you know, honestly, I do try to foster friendships here. Um, anybody that's followed my stream for any length of time will know that Actually, four or five players in here know, like, they play with each other. They they interact and stream and all that. And, you know, they're very friendly with each other. So I really do try to foster um, friendly relations on here. But, you know, do you, man? It's America. You know, if you want to be a big meanie, just as long as you don't cross any lines, we're cool. Like shit, you know. And it's not like anybody's never – nobody's ever called me fluffy before or been said anything like, I got thick skin, bro. But, um. Let's be real. Let's be real. Um, I'm going to be – this is one of the very few times I'm like one team just kind of got folded. Um, I've been playing – One truth be told, I've been playing bar for about two weeks now. Um, I've known about bar for a while. I downloaded it a while ago. And that's and that's going to be GG by our team. And I was mostly a StarCraft player. I was actually um, – I was actually kind of low diamond – MBT, yes. I've I've played with I have played with I never streamed MBT. Played with him once or twice. He's a cool guy. Um, he's actually really good. At least if I remember correctly. Sometimes I'm wrong. My memory fucks me up. You know, he could have been bad, but from what I you know, I just have positive memories of playing with him. So um so uh fact of the matter is um we all is he? Well, if I see toxic or bullying behavior, then I'll call it out. And I'll call somebody a dick that's acting like a dick straight up. I think uh, I'm pretty sure everyone – there's another character here that was that's pretty um, that's pretty well known in the community, at least in the levels I play. And his name's like Wojak, Woj, Woj Tech or something like that. And I was a little bit like I was kind of rooting for him, but he was the game I casted with him in it. He was very toxic. He actually raised quit and his team won. You know, his team actually pulled it off. Um, there are a lot of toxic players in every game you ever play. Dude, I played fucking um, League of Legends, bro. You know, <laughs> and I'm pretty sure if, if you ever play League of Legends, you know. So toxic and bullying, you know, it's just I, I accept it at this point, you know. There's a, there's a block button for a reason, and um, you know, in my in my professional experience, well, I'm not a professional. In my experience, um, legal lesbians. <laughs> hey, hey, I don't know if I can say that on stream, brother. I don't know if I can say that on stream, but um, in my experience, um, bullies uh, they shoot themselves in the foot. They shoot themselves in the foot. They get so they they tilt too easy. They can't recognize a pot potential when something goes bad. And I remember I, I was watching what was Joe Tech, and he was like, and he was just calling everybody. And I'm sitting there. I'm like, this is perfectly winnable, dude. 
this is perfectly winnable. You're fine. And then they won. <clears throat> the reason why they won because everybody else like kept it cool. But yeah, no, no, no. no. I, I, I don't really tolerate assholes. I'll tolerate asshole behavior in small doses as long as it's like within certain lines, guidelines. You know, because, you know, who am I to talk? I've been an asshole before. You know, I've raged once or twice, you know, but people who are bullies, no, 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 no. I, I, I'll call them out. So don't be a bully in my damn in my damn streams, or else I'll call you out. And you'll and people are going to be like, "Hey, what a butthead." But anyways, let's talk more about the players and, and our community that we're building. Um, I'm actually pretty proud that a lot of my like I, like I started out with no friends. I've only been streaming this for like uh, since Monday. I've only been streaming since Monday, and my stream has actually grown quite nicely. It's it's actually a little surprising. I got a notification that, I, that I'm about to. Uh, I'm really close to hitting um, affiliate. I have no idea what that means, honestly. I know that maybe some way for me to make a dollar or two here or there. I don't know. It's kind of cool. Um, this was supposed to be just for fun. But then I met like people like Gressa, Dudan, freaking um, Verstrom, um, pretty much all these other players. And like we kind of like we kind of get together when I get on and we kind of enjoy like we don't like like what's the word? It's like they find out I'm on. I know I'll mess with them. Let them know. Hey guys, I'm on. Just so you know, if you want to just like find out where I'm at and enjoy the stream or whatever. And like they have a blast together. And the funny thing is, I don't know if that would have happened otherwise. So whatever badness may happen because I'm here, I think it's I think it's actually balanced out by all the all the fun that we all have together, right? And at the end of the day, fuck rank, fuck winning, and all that. Isn't it about having fun or not, right? Like last night, um, I did a um one v one against Agressa just because I promised him one, and I did I tried to do a like a I tried doing a commander drop like one minute into the game, and and uh, I thought his uh, commander would have moved out, but nope, he kept his commander in base, and I was gonna degun his um, uh, I was gonna try it, yeah, I was gonna try and degun his um his uh, bot lab and just kind of like fuck with him a little bit, do some cheesy shit. And he left his commander in base, so my commander flies over his base, and he just shoots it out of the air, blows up his base, blows up my base. So it was it was just fun. We were laughing our ass off. So we didn't care who won. It was a great time. We had a great time. I think uh, Aggressive just couldn't stop laughing. It was it was the greatest it was the greatest moment of my life for the, for like a week. <laughs> but yeah, I'm really happy about I'm happy about those moments, and that I think everybody should be happy about the moments that that can potentially happen. Oh, hi, MBT. Are you a bully and an asshole? Should I be calling you out? Yes. Well, don't be a bully and an asshole. Here's your call out. <laughs> I had a feeling. I had a feeling. I thought, I was like, maybe he's MBT. Despite that, man, despite that. Despite you being a self, at least you can admit it, man. And that's the first step to recovery. That is the first step to recovery. <laughs> Jimmy Jams. Jimmy Jams is going to be going for the front right here. Now, as we all know, I'm trying to see if there's a response, but I'm enjoying this. But as we all know, this is going to be our front lines. GPG have doing his best, gonna be doing his best to try and control this front lines. Um, I always suggest that people take advantage of the rocks because these rocks not only provide metal, they also provide energy. Um, there is plenty of energy on this map, so res bots are quite nice. Um Dave Dallas, I guess we can call him, is gonna be holding the front with him. Um, in this position right here, this could be a million things. It could be support, it could be navy, it could be hovercrafts, could be pretty much anything. T Drex is gonna be in this position looks like he will be starting out with a lab of some sort maybe bot or vehicle who knows kahada jin kahada jin going to be going for a uh well this is typically a later navy position i would not yeah go in a bot lab 
in this position. That way you just get some sort of eco going. That way you can start building. But the problem is I hate this position. I will never, ever want to play this. Mainly because Aggressa, his opponent, gets a pretty fast start on his Navy in comparison. In comparison. This is typically an, e an eco spot. This is typically your air spot. LLT, the opposite. He will have the Navy advantage at least at the beginning of the game. Yellow is a – this right here is a, is a pretty much a pure support spot. Now, he could go – he could support Navy or he could support front. Typically, they support front. No big deal. Um, bad bot over here. He's in a little bit of a more disadvantaged position when it comes to Navy. Kleinex in the support spot where he absolutely could do what, pretty much whatever he wants. I like the flexibility of this spot. And anybody that's creative can absolutely do an amazing, amazing things here. <coughs> Zef. Zef is going to be going front lines. Um, I would like to see commanders pushing out a little bit earlier. Uh, Daedalus right here seems to be doing a good job at that. Yev T Y. We have streamed and played with this player before. He's been quite quite a nice, quite a good player. Um, nothing bad to say about his gameplay. Um, other than could use some refinement if I remember correctly. Yeah, yeah, I like I like him going for the solars. I think that was absolutely wise. So good on you, good sir. J Dog going for the going for the support position where he could choose to support navy or front lines. Typically, like I said, they support front lines. Aggressa, once again, in the navy. Doing his darndest to be a good navy player. Pretty proud of him. Oh, I like that. Sharon, Sharon stuff. Sharon is Karen. It can be fun. It's not gun in our air position. Nothing too crazy. Just kicking ass like he always does. Suavocado. Um, Suavocado going to be our eco player. I like that he's going. <laughs> I like that he's going. Um, Yes, sharing. Yeah, absolutely. Share if you can in this game. Suavocado, I do like the fact that he is uh, getting some res bots. This can be missed as a uh, – because builds builds on um, builds on one map are going to change from map to map, mainly because this one does have a lot of energy potential for uh, res bots. So getting a bunch of res bots out right now is almost better than getting – for the moment, is almost better than getting windmills out because he's just going to eat them up. Like he could really – like he's, he's only got six windmills out, which is like at this point not that – wouldn't be that great on glitters but what he's doing right now is amazing because he's he's able to have six windmills have a uh, energy storage and still fill it and that's because he's just eating up all the energy i like the i like the i like the play by him and he's already eaten up his his uh i'm not gonna say don't want to get give away too much but i will say this Ooh, it's pretty close. It's neck and neck. Do, do we have the same thing going on for our Lion Green? Hmm. Not really. Ooh, the wind hit is starting to go down a little bit. We're going to see how this plays out. But uh, let's keep an eye on the front lines. This is where like a lot of the action shows up at first. Um. We are starting to get some Rocketeers out. I think Rocketeers are absolutely the best call for uh, Jimmy Jams. I love the fact that Doodalist just pushed out this far. He was. This is the problem with uh, keeping your commander back too long. Your commander can take out pretty much most of this pretty easily um, with a few with a good uh, D gun or you know like uh, this right here is pawns. You know, he could take out probably all those bombs by himself without a D-gun. So he was able to secure one, not only his his uh, 4.3 metal, he was able to secure the middle 4.3 metal. And now he has a wall and a line of turrets at their 4.3 metal. There is, this is, this is all bad for our brown, for our gold player. Pink gold, geothermal starting to be taken. I like it. Geothermal was taken a long time ago by J-Dog. There is one geothermal available right here for um, 
Mr. Bot of Clan Bad if he decides to take it. I would probably, if I was, I would hope, sometimes I can get forgotten about. It happens from time to time. My construction turrets aren't working. You know what? I've seen similar stuff like that happen. Um, yeah, you're going to have to. There they go. I don't know what the hell happened. Now they're working. There you go. <laughs> good job. <laughs> yeah, aggressive. Yep, good job. But Daedalus right here, he 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 is the kind of he he is the kind of player, maybe even a little bit more aggressive than me. This is the kind of stuff I like to do. Because if I see an opening, I take it. A lot of people that get they they get right here, they're like, okay, I got mine. Now it's time to fight over this and wait like a gentleman right here until the other guy shows up. And then and when they're playing guys like me and Daedalus, like they're like, okay, um, I'm going to start marching out, and then I go, oh, shit, my shit's taken, you know? So right now, you've got pulling in a mass of 14, <laughs> 16, 17 metal per second in comparison to 22, which may not seem like a lot, but it is. It is. Do we have, like, what we got going on for you a bit? Or whatever. Like right now, you need to you need to start going heavy into um, making sure you're able to supplement that with some sort of energy converter conversion. In my opinion, you do have 31 turrets. I mean, um, wind turbines, which means you could have uh, six uh, energy converters. That's gonna that would catch you up with uh, good old Mister um, Doodleist, Daedalus. Yep, so right now, like, there has been a lack of energy conversion, I've noticed, throughout these games, especially on the front for the frontline players. Yep, 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 good call out. I like that. The Nat calling out the free metal that can be eaten. It is going to be super help, uh, helpful. Um, it is, it, you got to do stuff like that because it's just, like, honestly, I think it's nice. It's good to remind people. Yeah, he, he didn't just ping. He also marked. Oh, well, this is red team. So red team has no idea what blue team pinged. It does look like Daedalus is going to get pushed back eventually. <coughs> red was forced to respond. This was just too much to give up, in my opinion. Um, Daedalus did. Oh, problem with Daedalus right now is like this is where Navy is going to be an issue for him and um he did not build backwards he built towards the sea it feels like and his um yeah looks like he ate up his tier two so he can move it stop what who's doing what what am i missing Paid two tier, please. All right. So, you know, you know, people saying they paid for tier two. I'm trying to figure out what's going on. Why are people upset about? I don't know. I don't want to know. I don't care anymore. They are pointing out the, the Navy. We would like to see a response from. I don't think there is going to be a response from um, Cottagen. Cottagen is a uh, is pretty much a veteran from of our stream. He has been in a few of them. I don't think there is going to be a Navy response from him, to be perfectly honest. And the main reason for this is like his his commander's not even close to the water. He just wants to block things right now. He, and this is something you gotta communicate with people because right now what these could have been up a minute ago. And even even so, this is this has put Daedalus in a bad spot, but he also put himself in a bad spot. In this position, all right. So what I look at when I get my starting position. I try to get here because this is the Navy the side that should win. And if I get here, I should be okay. But even so, I, I build my base backwards. Just in case, you know what I mean? Deadless, um, he should have, in my opinion, with how, how aggressive it was and how well he played, it was never in contention. <laughs> well, for them, it's not. maybe that's North Sea for them. But yeah. 
North Sea was lost for them. But Deadless, um, in this position, you should know that a lot of players will not even try to contest this. And so you got huge backwards. And if you get about right here, this is where your tier two stuff should be going. By the time this happens, you should have already had tier two. You should have a energy converter. You should at least be starting a um, a uh, reactor. And it should be right here. And this is pretty much out of range of all the missile boats and all that. And this could die. All this stuff, don't give a shit about it anymore. It could die. Let them waste their time blowing it up or you can start reclaiming it. It's up to you. It's up to you. I like to start reclaiming it just because I can. Why not? It's free metal, free energy. But pretty much, Deadless has got nothing on the front lines now because of this. And he was winning. He was winning. And this is the map that at first, when I first started playing, just frustrated the shit out of me because I'd win. I would win and then lose because missiles would come in. And you know what? Thinking back on it, I, I would be upset. I'd be like, why, why didn't you even try? And maybe there is a bit of a truth there. Like, they should have at least tried to go into Navy or Hovercraft or something. But the truth of the matter is, is like, if I just thought to push here, I wouldn't, uh, it wouldn't have mattered. I would have still won and I would have been able to win even more instead of losing all my stuff because I have my tier two factory right here, you know? So there is, there is a little bit of a, I do like the inclusion of Janice's though. Janice's, no, no, Janice's and Whistler's. Janice's and Whistler's just, just beat agitators and rocketeers. But at the same time, Red's already tier two. Red's tier two. And yeah, yeah. Red being tier two is going to be an issue. Red being tier two is going to be an issue. Man, he had that lane one. He had that lane one. So many, so many bad things happened. All right, LLT. He has pretty much um, done a good job at um, – at, Basically capturing all of this C right here. <clears throat> Bad bot right here. All I can do is hold off. Maybe make some tumblers if he has the ability to make tumblers. I don't think he can. Oh, excuse me. Sorry, guys. But, yeah, making tumblers is a good way to uh, win the C off, especially if, you, if you're if you good at self-detonating them. But I don't see it happening in, time in the near future. This is eventually going to – and Zeph is not going to say it. But yeah, if you know, you know. <coughs> Yolo doing a pretty good job equaling off the off the position of his uh, front line players. Um, this right here, the problem is there's no. If something happens, he has no response. He can't respond. That's the only issue I'm having. I do like that he's getting that anti nuke out. He is able to cover for the most part. His base, Jimmy Jam's base, and Green's base with it. Anthony coming out all around now. We're starting to see it come out all around for both teams. Good job. Now, me calling out Anthony is not necessarily the biggest deal in the world because if, uh, like, you're not going to start building a nuke the second I see Anthony building because, for one, Anthony builds faster, gets your missiles faster. So, I will never ever call out a nuke, but I will always call out anti nuke. Well, not always. I, I may slip up and call out anti nuke just for funsies. Not gonna call out where. Well, I did. Oopsies. But whatever. It doesn't fucking matter because guess what? You should, you can see the you can see the ring too. Yeah, static defenses. Um, it's gonna help out a while for a while. In fact, right now, red team. Red team just in a, it, they're in a good spot. There's only one little problem I'm having I'm having with the situation the red team has, and maybe we'll find out later, and I'll call it out when it happens. But there's just one little issue I'm having with that. But um, yeah, those agitators definitely get their money worth. Problem is they're starting to get shelled down, mostly by this guy. Uh, is that a gauntlet? When does a gauntlet just fire straight into the air? I've never seen that. Interesting. They are repairing it. I do like the fact that they're repairing it. Yeah. Good positioning by uh, Jimmy Jams. 
Jimmy James. Good job. Well done. Good sir. So we do have so we do have opposing navies, uh, opposing wins on the navy side. And it's the sides I kind of kind of expected. This happens pretty much every single game. Once the side that has like the closest walk to the beach will typically win the navy. And what ends up happening, which I've seen a thousand times, is one player just decides to not even try. Problem with that is, you know, that's that's your decision, but you gotta you gotta make sure people are aware of it, and maybe even make suggestions to maybe not put all their stuff on against the coastline. That is a lot of assault frigates. What got going on? All right, we got. Some of those coming out for our green player. It looks pretty nice. Man, we do have an attempted run by that is quickly blown up by a uh, Dragon's Maw. So you guys stop TKing me. J-Dog being a little bit of a sour, sour, you know, a, 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 you know, a negative Nancy. You know, that's okay, though. Like, like you can't be frustrated. But, you know, like, you know, you're not helping your team out when you, um, when you curse at them, sad to say. Because, honestly, if it helped my I would be the happiest guy in the world cursing, help my team out, because I would, I'd win every game. I'm pretty sure uh, MBT would win every game as well. <laughs> we do have some uh, ambassadors coming out. This is going to be quite nice for the assault on the gauntlet. The problem is I don't know if he, if they – for one, it's getting experience like crazy. So health is going up, fire rate's going up, and it's getting healed like mad. So, yeah, I don't think they can DPS through that. Ooh, persecutor pop-up plasma in I, that's so cool. That is so cool. We do have our first um, pr uh, pulsar out on the field. Going to be able to pretty much make it so. Yeah, nothing heavy is going to be able to do too much. All right, we've got pretty even air forces. I like it. Little, up, 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 up. Somebody's starting to notice something. There are pings. Bad shit's happening. Aggressive's doing aggressive things. Are we, are, guys, are we not, are we, are we like really surprised at this point? <laughs> kind of wondering. They're just sonar planes. <laughs> okay. Okay, he did a lot of scouting with some of our planes. I kind of like it because he did get a bigger vision. Yeah, yeah, I think that's the – yeah. Um, I don't know if those are the right targets. I think the – the. I'll tell him after his stuff gets blown up. Well, I'll say it after his stuff gets blown up. I think the right target is not those. I think it's the converters. Those are easier to kill, and they're quite explosive. Yeah. They, they, they were pretty bad but that that not a not a bad idea that you know like once again with the gohanes a lot of drawing I'm not sure if there's any strategic value to most of these drawings but there is drawings um, I believe he was trying to say do that or maybe even this yeah <laughs> Uh, I just screwed myself. <laughs> I just screwed myself. Uh, I think you, uh, as far as bombers, yeah, bombers would have been nicer. No doubt about it. You would have, you would have done a lot more damage to bombers. I don't think there's any denying that. I think the issue you had right there was a little bit of prioritization because these are much weaker and they are explosive and there is enough of them to blow up. That, that blows up, that blows up, boom. But, yeah. 
But once again, more scout planes. Yeah. I don't think you're going to get through. I wouldn't tell you if I did if I thought you were going to get through. <laughs> yeah. I do like the goose the Gustafs on here. Yeah. I do like the balls. <clears throat> but this is going to leave a window open for our uh, pink player to to help out with the problem is he, they're just flying into more like ground on tire, which, you know, air doesn't shoot ground for some reason. Like, you know, fighters don't shoot ground in this game, which is fine. Good stuff. Front line static as always. Uh, we do have a little bit of tick spam coming out, some sharpshooters in the front line. This is my only problem with Supreme. It's like, you know, Navy gets stale. The, like, you know, it's fun when you're in it, but it's really hard to cast because there's not a lot of movement going on. You know what I mean? So if I'm, the way I, what I'm seeing just is just the same thing I saw five minutes ago, except maybe with a little bit of air movement. But there are a few battleships out in the field, and this is one thing I was worried about. I was trying to keep it secret, is that Pink does have a lot of his stuff on the front lines. LLT. I think missing a little bit of opportunity for more damage. But I think he did do enough. But, man, I think those energy converters could have been nice. See, the issue I'm having here right now is, like, I'm trying not to call out stuff that could – because, like, there there has been concerns over, like, stream sniping and all that. And I don't want to call out stuff that is – like, I'm really trying not to. I legit try not to. But we just, it's, I love Supreme. Like, dude, honestly, Supreme is, is actually funner to play than um, all the glitters. But the issue I have here is, like, it's so stale to cast because the lines just stay so static. <sighs> but we do have a bit of a Tier 3 coming out uh, from our uh, from our Cyan player. He is trying to make those, I think, purely for the anti-air capabilities. I don't think it's uh, like as good good with anti air, but not great. That's the problem. Pink come through, making sure their bomb run does some more damage. I think it was a good little team up they had going on right there. <coughs> they are going to lose their bombers, but this is going to yeah, ouchies, and they're going to land like all over his base. Like could have taken out the build power, but didn't. It looks like uh, we are starting to get a uh, bit more air coming in from both sides. I do like what Aggressa did here, though. I do like what he did here. This, to me, makes perfect sense. You won, like, you own the sea. But we do have scuttles. We do have scuttles coming out. This is not from a to This is from Daedalus. Daedalus is trying his best to... Uh, protect himself in my opinion but yeah this is this front line is just dead it's dead until something just decides to go through it <laughs> the net poor the net where is the net right now yeah they did they did they definitely tried to attack you a couple times but yeah you are on the target list, that is for sure. As much as I love you, buddy. Yeah, like, there's not a lot going on. You know, it's just, you know, people are trying to eco up. People are trying to get more stuff going on. You know, it. it's kind of it's kind of rough. More air coming through from, the, from our uh, tan player, Aggressa. Trying to get a little bit more done. It is going to get to the point where the air defense is going to be too much, I believe. But the thing is, is like that's that's what you want. You want to waste 
<laughs> you want to waste resources on that. But I have seen it where, like, there's no amount of air getting through. I have seen those games. Been a part of them, seen them, been a part of them. <coughs> they can be fun to play, but they're 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 hell to cast. We do have some rolling bombs coming through. Looked like they were spotted. Shurikens trying to take out most of them. All right, able to spot all of them. Looks like they aren't going to do too much damage. I would have liked that scene. I would like to have seen it done more towards the Navy. Which looks like it could be. You know, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. There's places apparently to look. Looks like we are starting to have air mixed in with the front lines a little bit more. Anti-air is starting to come up. We do have bubbles coming up. Um, truth of the matter being, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a while before anything breaks through any of this. Blues on the offensive. Red just holding the lines. I believe Red understands they're in the, they're in an advantageous position, so they don't want to. They just don't want to lose to something crazy. So right now their focus is teching up and building their lines and trying to win, um, not go too cray-cray. But sadly, I don't – it just doesn't make for the most exciting game in the world to cast. Yep, there is a dead commander right here. You can res it. There is, that is a possibility. And I think right now it is wise. I think that 1.25K is just not as valuable as that 300 build power, to be perfectly honest. Maybe later – the early GG, I'm not sure why. I don't see anything game-changing happening other than the fact that Tier 3 is on the field. But Tier 3 has been on the field for a minute. Uh, we do have Razorbacks pushing forward on the front line. The problem with Razorbacks in this situation is they're going to they're going to they're just going to waste their shots on um, on ticks at the moment, and when really they could be pushing. I might, I might be tempted to, yeah, I'd probably get them together and um, put them on a hold fire and just, just use them to target fire stuff. That's probably what I would use them for. Too much tick spam, man. This is, listen, you want to get an advantage of tick spam, and this is something everybody should know. And if you don't know it and you're watching my stream, I'm sorry, but you're not going to lose because I said something on stream. You're going to lose because you didn't know something. <coughs> so, fact of the matter is, fact of the matter is, is it a Juno? I believe it's called a Juno. <coughs> yes. Well, we're going to call it Juno. It is a Juno because I mix up Juno and Janice all the time just because they sound similar. So what you can do, the way Juno works is uh, you, you launch a um, you're fucking aggressive. Yes, you you launch a um, you launch a uh, now it would work better for uh, yellow team, the blue team, because it would do nothing to uh, these grunts. But um, red team, um, if they got a Juno, they can launch it towards this uh, towards this uh, little little uh the, the little straight and if what it does it takes out all radar all anti-radar within its blast radius and it, it radiates ground for a short while and the radiation is enough damage to uh take out ticks the second they step on it i don't know if it it doesn't it doesn't take out grunts i don't even think it damages anything else but it's it's meant for anti-tick spam i think uh Grunt spam does actually cost you as far as build power. So, yeah. You can actually kind of see it. You can kind of see, like, if you're looking at the, the grunt spam, you can kind of see, like, some of the grunts stall out. It's kind of funny. <laughs> but, yeah, you know. 
It's getting to the point where this is just ridiculous. We're gonna, we're going up to one a bajillion and two, you know, aphises for one team, a bajillion and three aphises for another team, you know. <laughs> you know. It's getting to the point where where everybody should be like like honestly, if I was in game, I'd be tier three by now. I would be pumping out tier three units by now as frontline. And this could very well happen for a couple of our players. We have a call out for a certain thing at a certain time. I do like what Snot Gun's coming at. He's a. I do like the. Because, like, there's only so much that can lose you this game at this point, right? There's only so much collusion in this game. Um, having having a, a nuke land in an unsuspected spot that you just didn't cover that can that can win you the game. Um, maybe just finding a spot and shelling away at the wrong position could win you the game. A bombing run could win you the game. Fucking um, uh, just being worn down over the next 20, 30 minutes with tier three pushes and. Can we need the game and vice versa? But that's that's what in this position, that's what you want. Like if you're gonna lose, that's what you want. You want to uh, lose you the game. It's like you want to be worn down. <clears throat> you want to lose the game by being worn down by tier three pushes and then eventually losing the player, then you just can't keep up eco eco wise. You don't want to lose to somebody not you know putting up an anti nuke or or navy just going uncontested and one player just wrecking everybody's shit until you like you can't just keep up because that's what ends up happening in these Navy battles is like, uh, is one player has access to basically unfettered access to three to like three bases. If done wrong. And just what I was, yep. I don't know what happened. Yep. looks like, uh, there was a lot. Oh my God, dude. Just an entire base just evaporated. I'm not sure. Yeah. Yep. There was a uh, flagship, it looks like. Oh, oh, there's a flagship right here. Yep. This is right here. This is disheartening. This is disheartening. You do not want this. Like, good news is there are bubbles on for some players. Um, But this right here, like, eh. It's gonna it's gonna help out. The fact that he can, oh my god, yep. Ouchies. I didn't realize its range was that long. Yeah, that's a lot of range. Yeah, flagships have a shit ton of range. And this is the problem, like he should have contested this a while ago, in my opinion. So this right here is um this is the problem with like letting one player just go unfeathered. Is like you gotta make precautions because for one, all right, there are bubbles up. There are bubbles up. Like it looks like. How are we doing? Yeah. He made the only call he could. So much air gone down right there, but yeah, that's what happens when you make a few bombing runs. You're, you're gonna eventually have a shit ton of air. Just blow everything up. I do like what the line green is thinking. I think it's the right call. It is absolutely a good call at this phase of the game, especially since you are the support player. I think that's that's absolutely what you want to do. <laughs> the Nat saying thank you. I like it. Well, you may not be wrong, buddy. You may not be wrong. No, it's just I do like this patrol action going on. You don't see too much of it. I do like this patrol action. What player is this? YOLO? Yeah, you only live once. Might as well have good patrol action. I think uh a red team is probably we'll see. We'll see. 
We do see. We do have some developing uh, news. We do have some news developing. Um, you know, on Channel Six, we'll find out what's going on shortly. Once uh, everybody can understand what's going on, we do have a Titan push at the front. They were able to. Yeah, there is a uh, bit of um, EMP stuff going on for. Uh, to these uh, Vanguard. I do like the inclusion of Vanguard in the front line, but this is exactly what I was afraid of happening. And here it comes. Now it's known about. There is a tier three push coming on the top hand side. Ooh. And before Thanat's commander could really do any real damage. Problem is with this many bubbles, it's going to make it real hard to get those shots off with those Marauders. Like you have to be inside like literally every bubble. And... Killing this stuff means you are going to kill your Marauders. Oh, you do want to get the build power first, in my experience. <laughs> oh, my God. There's one Razorback in there. Oh, my God. Did you see that? <laughs> Just one got kind of caught and glitched and flung out. That was beautiful. There was one random ra Razorback just blowing shit up. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Yep. J Dog making a bit of a mistake there. Um the problem with uh the problem with this is like no matter what, you would have had to get to a point where you would have blown up all your shit anyways. I think he could have um I think he could have done you were gonna sacrifice no what. I do like the idea of going for the build power. I don't know if that's a joke, bro. I think that's a I think you just kind of had a mistake, and it's 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 not like it's your fault, but it's not like it's anybody else's fault, and it's not like it's the game's fault. Shit like that happens all the damn time. Yep, and there it was. <laughs> just uh, our pink player, freaking snot gun, just making sure. Just making sure, yes, well played, snot gun. Just making sure that that was not for all. That's got to make red player feel a lot better. That's got to make J Dog feel a lot better. They put a little bit of a smile on his face. Like, why the whole game? It's me who's getting asked. Because you didn't contest C, and you just. You, this is what happens, man. You didn't contest C, and you didn't build far back. So when, when there was a. Uh, like, you should have. You have. You can't just play defensive all game and not expect them to eventually. In, in 39 minutes, 40 minutes of gameplay, not find your weak spot. That's why. That's why. Like, I like you, bro. I like you, bro. But this is a question that does not need to, like, like if you're going to ask, I'm going to answer. That's why. You can't play the most defensive game ever. Let aggressive take the North Sea. Allow him to build an Air Force and a Navy in the North Sea. And then be like, well, I'll, hopefully they just leave me alone for 40 minutes. I'm sorry. I love you, bro, but that's just what happened to you. We do have a bit of an Air Force battle going over the, going over the ocean. This is kind of nice. I like to see it. Things are starting to pick up. You know, lines at the front are, are uh, still static as always. But we do absolutely have some good pushes coming on here. Ooh, Brown trying his best to build back up, but I don't see it happening. Green was, um, our blue team was able to win the air battle right there, but they are not able to capitalize on that win. Just not enough left over in my opinion. But at the same time, now they know that there's a uh, little bit of a tier three push coming from the bottom. It's not enough to really warrant four pings in like, in like a quarter of a second. Because there is one Thor there. I would have to agree with him. I would have to agree with Yev T.Y. That is something they I would probably consider. A Juno would be nice too, because that's a lot of spit, that's a lot of ticks. I'm just saying. A Juno would be nice. <laughs>
Two Junos would be even better. And Caressa saying he needs metal at the 41 minute mark makes me makes me be like, man, you either have way too much fucking metal. <laughs> either either you're building way too much or something going on. I do like it though. Right now, Gress is pretty much. Oh my god. What are these? Poison ever. Oh man. This is nuts. This is gonna be this is this is quite dangerous. Lucky for them, they're not as yeah. Yeah. Thor's Thor still kicked the shit out of them, sadly. He is trying though. He's like, nope, there's gonna be he's like, I am gonna freaking uh poison arrow spam. Death by a thousand poison arrows. We do have some more pushes coming out from uh certain teams and or players. I do think YOLO's forethought might come in handy. We will find out, though. I do think poor, what's his name, Daedalus? Poor Daedalus is going to take the brunt of this. Yeah, this is a sad time for Daedalus, I feel. Maybe not. They are going down quite quick. This might make, okay, there we go. It is not as much damage as I thought it was going to do. But there, no, now it is. And this is the problem with building stuff right here. You got to move back. Like, only thing you should be right here is like your windmills and shit that you didn't eat up. You should be more like right here. More like right here. I'm just saying. It is what it is. Now we have more air coming through. I think this is just now getting to the point where it's overwhelming. The creativity of the red team just kind of uh just uh just a more um more flexibility that the red team is uh is cre is afforded considering certain positions, especially the positions in the sea. Um it's just gonna it's just helping them snowball their advantage. Daedalus now unable to contribute to the front or any real defense. Yeah, that hurt. That hurt a lot. Luckily for the blue team, that TDRX, TD Rex, TD Rex is not out of it. I think that would have been a much bigger hit than they can withstand. I still think there's a bit of hope for blue. Jeez Louise. We do have the green player starting to take advantage of the of the fact that he has one C. <clears throat> Not gonna lie, LLT could have done this a lot a, a while ago. I think this is this would have been a much better uh, decision. This is gonna make it a lot harder for uh, for red team to control the. Just basically control anything at the at the front of the lines. He can overwhelm the shield with what he has. And he is starting to. Yep. Yep. There goes some power. There goes some, yep. It's just too much right now. By this time you should have more than two bubbles anyways. Might be able to get saved by these Titans, though. Yeah. I would have just kept firing. Ooh. Just keep shooting. Just keep shooting. That is a lot of Titans on the field. That is 13. 13 Titans out in the field right now. Now, you don't want to push that many Titans. Not yet. Not yet. And the main reason is, like, you push them, like, any damage you do is going to be get, basically given back to them in res, by res bots.
This is not a bad decision. Knock down the health of the Titans. Because those Titans right now are the only thing holding back that tick spam. I'm just a I'm a much bigger advocate for I'm a much bigger advocate for a Juno. I do go Juno quite often. Get a Juno card. Do not what not do anything on land. I must have missed it. I think you probably went uh, amphibious uh, um, Invisibots. Yeah, it's, uh, he's getting free damage with these uh, battleships and the flagships. He's getting free damage onto these Titans. They might be forced to pull forward and try to get some sort of damage done before he loses them all. But yeah, it's... This... Now there is a... Uh, I think this right here, there's going to be a massive air battle. There's going to be a massive air battle coming. Now, this is going to be over blue team's um, home side, so there is obviously anti-air. But is there enough? Oh, my computer. Oh, my God. That, dude, he just. Now, this stuff can land on land inside those bubbles, I think, and cause some serious damage. But, yeah, he just. That was a lot of bombers to lose, just like from like two flat gun shots. Saw that coming a minute ago, but I think this is a much better use of those bombers. Bombing the front lines is not a bad use of them. So you can use the air to kind of inch forward at this point. Yeah, if you're not junioring right now, like this is that tick spam. This is the first time I've really seen tick spam really kind of be an effective, uh, be this effective. Yeah, it's time to find out more avenues of attack from a rate team for the air. And I think attacking this sea that hasn't been contested for since Brown's been like blown up is right where you want to do. Or any of those torpedo torpedo bombers. I think it's the right. I think it's the right move. Like no lie, I think it's the right move. It's gonna make them pull back. It's gonna make them. <coughs> it's gonna keep them from like um. Just basically blowing up all your shit. <laughs> blowing up all your shit anymore. What is going on over here? Yep. Cross are having the same thoughts at this point. We do have a Titan marching out towards Aggressa. Aggressa does see it. This could be a bit of... Now, damn, uh, Aggressa doesn't have any, uh, any um, real eco going on in his side of um, on where he, was, where he spawned. This could be this could turn into a little bit of a pain in the butt for him, especially since. Oh yeah, yeah, a little bit of a pain in the butt for him. It's going to be a lot of a pain in the butt because he's only down to seventy percent health. Does Gress have the energy to cloak? He does. Yeah, this is a. This could prove to be pretty painful for Aggressa. It may not, but yeah, it, it's going to be. I don't know. He's not targeting what I would target. Yeah, he's not going to be able to do it. Yep. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, that turned into a big uh, – that could have been a much worse. That could have been much worse. 
Oh man, it's just it's just a clusterfuck. That's just a clusterfuck. It makes me sad to watch because it's just like so much is going on, but nothing's going on. You know what I mean? Nothing has changed in like really the past 20 minutes. Sure. We took a little bit of damage here, a little bit of damage there, a little bit of damage there. But pretty much what's been going on is the same thing. The lines have, have, got, have gotten stale. Hmm. This might be interesting, though. From Fanat. Now, those plasma cannons on those uh, flagships do have a bit of a, of a radius. I do like what Fanat's thinking, though. And at this point, metal means nothing. Like, leaving them metal doesn't mean shit. He does... Yeah, taking that out would be a little bit of accomplishment. But can you take it out? Ouchies, ouchies, ouchies. The funny thing is, I believe these come from, yeah, these come from the gantry, which is kind of sad. You know? I would love to see more um, scene units coming from the gantry that are actually really nice. No lie. Yeah, it's just a clusterfuck. And this is this is my one critique of the game. It's like this this stuff does tend to stall out right here until something else happens. You know what I mean? <clears throat> until somebody finds some way to just kind of like do a bunch of damage real quick. It's just there, like there's no skill, like there's not no like real super amount of skill at this point. Now this right here is interesting. A bajillion aircraft, yeah. Taking out all, yeah, he, yeah. I think this is this is a good play right here. It's a good play by our uh, red team, but it it's lagging out my computer like a motherfucker. Having five billion units on the on the screen, you know. I need a thirty thousand dollar computer, straight up. Anybody wants to donate thirty thousand dollars to stream to the stream for a new computer? I'd love you. <laughs> Let me eBay for that like supercomputer that NASA doesn't even have. I like the use of um I like the use of the bombers. I like what happened here. Now, does it affect his account? How well, how badly does it affect his con? Almost not at all. <clears throat> that's the issue I'm having like right now. It's like that's a good play. That's a good play, but how much does it really <laughs> hit me a lot of three thousand metal man? But like at this point, like it's like almost negligible. Like these people can't spend. Most of these guys can't spend the money that they're uh, that they're they're producing. You know what I mean? It's so it's so interesting. To watch. Now the funny thing is, like some of these people, I'm looking at, them, I'm like, how the hell are you spending the money that you're producing? There's a lot of stuff happening. That's a lot of... Oh, my God, dude. I, I can't even commentate on it. It's so nuts. There was a nuclear bomber, though. Jimmy James commander just dancing there like a, like a gangster. Go, Jimmy James. Shake it. Shake it. Do the Jimmy James dance. I'm catching up, Jesus. 
All right, all right. I need a backup or else my computer's gonna just explode. Yeah, it's there's nothing much going on. Like a little bit of skirmishes here and there from the airs. But yeah, poor Agressa looks like um he is eventually going to have some issues with all these lunkheads. I like this call by Thanat. I do like this call by Thanat. Getting the long heads out, clearing out one of the seas is a step in the right direction. At the same time, I don't know. At the same time, I don't know. It's so hard. It's so hard to commentate because there's so much going going on. There's like a literal line of freaking tier one units of pawns. And it hurts my brain to look at. Right? It is it, it is a bit boring. Like well, like like there's like I said, there's so much going on, but nothing is happening. You know? This is about like the fourth GG coming from our red player. In a 57-minute game, he is averaging about one GG every 12 minutes. <laughs> there was a ping, but there's so much going on that I can't tell where the hell the ping was. Oh, there it is. He is making a call out for what looks like to be. He does want his. He does what he would like his bombers protected. I don't know. Is this? This is a good play right here. We ha we do have people leaving the game. Yeah, yeah. Red team just kind of gave up. I kind of agree with it. At a certain point, you just want to just. You want it over. And it looked like they were the ones losing. The issue I have here is like, you know, this is why I don't really kind of stream Supreme is it does get to a, a point where, uh, whoa, looks like I was I did lose connection. Make sure I log in. Boom, 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 boom. Sorry about that. But, yeah. Let's, let's see. Yeah, but yeah, that that happens from time to time. It happens from time to time where um where there yeah, it's not gonna. You're right. The issue is that was like the it was it was uh, it, it got it was it it just got to the point. Yeah, you know, it's like everybody's producing a bajillion units, but nothing's like moving. And, ooh, it just, you know. But, um, fact of the matter is, is, uh, it's not going to, it's right, you know, like, um, air, you know, the other team had more air and did a pretty good job of, uh, being a bit more, um, a bit more adaptive to with their, uh, well, no, I think, uh, blue team at the beginning, uh, I think red, was it blue team? Uh, red team, red team at the beginning uh, did a much better job of uh, at the beginning of being more adaptive. Yeah, red team. Uh, but at the same time, you know, like nobody was willing to make the Ragnarok. Nobody was willing to try a nuke. We were hour in the game, not one nuke anti nuke exchange. First time I've ever seen that in any game even close to that long. Normally 20 minutes into a game, you start seeing that. 
So, yeah, you know, I think there was a little bit of a lack of innovation by both teams. Aggressive tried his best. He had some He had some good plays. But sadly, yeah. um, I think tonight this is going to be the last game I cast for the night. I might cast a little earlier tomorrow because uh, because I do have a day off. And on top of it, but I do, I am planning to move this weekend. So hopefully y'all um, have yourself a great night. I really enjoyed casting with you guys. Um, if you are a part of my game and you're watching my stream, you, I'm always welcome for uh, people to add me as a friend. You know, I really appreciate you guys and, uh, and I love you guys. And I know some people just dislike it, dislike the fact that I cast anything because they're like, oh, what if somebody streams? I oh, fuck you. I don't care. <laughs> Truth be told, get good. Overcome it. No amount of stream sniping was going to make anything happen in that game, you know. But it is what it is. You guys have yourself a great night. Love you lots. Peace.